This past weekend, the Athletics celebrated Barry Zito's return to the green and gold by handing him the ball and giving him a start in front of the East Bay faithful where his career began. This afternoon, the Southern California native will get one more trip to the mound as he takes on a team in the thick of a pennant chase. It's Zito and the A's taking on the Angels, and it's coming up next. Afternoon baseball from the Big A in Anaheim, and the A's trying to salvage the final game of the series with Barry Zito on the mound. And for the Angels, this is their final home game of the 2015 regular season. So it is game three of the series. It's the A's and the Angels coming up on CSN California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, Barry Zito has not made any official announcement that he is retiring, but uh, I think most people feel that it is. And if that is the case, this would be his final big league start, Ray. And I think that's pretty cool that we're here to show it. I think it's outstanding. That shot we had of him in Oakland when he was waving his cap, it looked like that was going to be it. And he probably was resigned to say that was it. He said he would be available out of the bullpen. But when Bob Melvin said, are you available to pitch against the Angels in the series finale, he jumped at the opportunity. So we do get a chance to see him make his last, last start, maybe as they're talking about it. But I think it's great that the fans get a chance to see Barry Zito again on the mound, a team that actually he's pitched very well against throughout his career. And every game very important for the Angels. They're playing great right now, marching toward the postseason. They got a bunch of hot hitters. And how about David Freeze, Ray? Yeah. He knows all about postseason baseball. He was a hero with the Cardinals, and, boy, he's really swinging it right now. And I think that experience at third base, and or especially swinging the bat, he's doing it all. He's getting walk-off hits. He has the first walk-off home run in his career. How about that during the regular season? Of course, he had one for the Cardinals in postseason. But for him at third base, doing a great job defensively as he went to his knees last night, made a very good play. But his hitting is spectacular. He knows how to hit. He might not hit a lot of home runs, but you open up some holes, as was the case last night, he'll find it to right field and drive in big runs, as that one was uh, for the Angels last night. A good player. I think the Angels are very fortunate to have him healthy again, playing at third base, but especially swinging the bat. So Barry Zito for the A's and Garrett Richards for the Angels. Richards is looking for his 16th win of the year. So final game of the series. It's the A's and the Angels. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the Big A in just a moment.
is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the Homestyle Ranch Chicken Club today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. So the Angels wearing the red tops this afternoon, and they are playing great baseball. They are looking for their eighth consecutive win. And it'll be Barry Zito's job to try to slow down those Red Hot Angels today here at the Big A. Game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is open this weekend. So it's warm, 87 degrees on a late afternoon, a 4.07 scheduled first pitch. So an interesting start time and interesting to the fact too Ray that the Angels have to travel to Arlington after the game and a two-hour time change so which I in yeah. well past midnight yeah I, I find that uh, hard to believe but so the A's lineup today has Sam Fold leading it off then Canna, Reddick, Valencia, Vogt, Lori, Sogard, Simeon and Smolinski and the biggest factor this afternoon it includes the pitcher on the mound Garrett Richards he is pitching right now out of the sun into the shadows and that of course is going to change as a game progresses but Garrett Richards this time last year was suffering from a serious knee injury out for the last part of the season and postseason but 15 game winner this year couple of starts this year against the Athletics total of 12 innings 12 hits he's given up in just four runs though a win and a no decision so a uh, actually win and a loss for Garrett Richards but a good pitcher an assortment of pitches that he will throw including a 97 mile hour fastball that he tops out with a four seamer Defensively, the Angels will have Victorino, Trout, and Calhoun in the outfield. Freeze, Ibar, Giovatella, and Crone on the infield. And Carlos Perez is your catcher. So Sam Fold steps in. We're ready for baseball from the Big A here in Anaheim. The final home game of the regular season for the Angels. And as Ray and I just mentioned, they will travel to Arlington after the game for a huge four-game series against the Texas Rangers starting tomorrow night. The Angels have been known to start games at this time, but it's usually on the getaway day when the team is traveling that they're playing, but not themselves. And I think that's an interesting point, especially as big as those four games are in Arlington starting tomorrow night. See the shadows where the pitcher is in the sunlight and then right at the edge of the mound. That's where the shadows come in. So that can be tough on a hitter. Yeah. Two one pitch outside now three and one with last night's win the Angels stuck into that second wild card spot in the American League the Angels won the Astros lost inside corner strike so three and two but the Angels are still thinking about winning that division they're two back of the Rangers Astros are two and a half and then there's the wild card. Right now, the Yankees and the Angels are the two wildcard teams, but Astros, Twins right there, and Fold lays off, and he's got a leadoff walk. And Garrett Richards, his 71st walk, tied for second most in the American League. So he will lose the strike zone occasionally, but all in all, a very good pitcher. He's 15 and 11 on the year. Umpires, Chris Guccione calls balls and strikes. Gorman, Carlson, Gibson rounded out, and that is the crew chief, Gorman, at first base. Brian Gorman. First pitch to Mark Canna is in for a strike. Canna at 252 with 15 homers and 68 RBIs. Be nice if the A's could. Score a couple of runs before Barry Zito takes them out. That's what happened last Saturday. The Giants scored two top half of the inning. Tim Hudson pitched a the bottom half, just giving up an opposite field hit by this man, Mark Canna. Okay, this is kind of the batting practice time. Angels yeah. would be hitting at this time, and as the shadows progress, then at a normal 7.05 start. But one of the issues that occurs with West Coast teams playing a postseason, they want the East Coast prime time, which means about an hour later is when they start. So a lot of shadows created this time of the year. West Coast teams playing the postseason. To third. Freeze has it to second for one. Giovatella on the pivot, and they got it. 
Five four three double play two outs here in the first. Well breaking ball and Mark Canna with the leg kick got the foot down but got on top of the off speed pitch and around the horn. Nice pick at first base by CJ Crone and just barely getting Mark Canna for the double play. So yeah if you could walk or do walk that many batters you can get a double play with the next batter. It's not that much of an issue. I think Garrett Richards well just seeing him the injury at first base in Boston last year is just hard to watch and I'm sure from his standpoint hard to recover from. And he was having such a great year last yeah. year when it happened it was August 20th when he went to cover first base at Fenway and his knee just collapsed. He ended up last year with a 13 and 4 record and 2.61 ERA so. Think about it he probably had. Who knows six seven more starts right. left, maybe more. And postseason and, and postseason they, they won the division so who knows how much that could have affected them was, The Royals were very hot but a good pitcher you never know. O2 pitch is hit high in the air toward left center. Looking up into the sunshine is Victorino and Victorino has it side retired. So bottom of the first coming up Barry Zito set to go to work and maybe. For the last time. Here's the Angels lineup. It'll be Ibar, Calhoun, Trout, Pujols, Crone, Freeze, Victorino, Perez, and Juvatella. And Barry Zito starting for the Athletics on this Thursday afternoon series, I mean, Wednesday afternoon series finale. But Barry, just his second start, started last Saturday. He pitched out of the bullpen in Houston and then started Saturday. He played an earn run average, which would be expected considering giving up the four runs and two innings. Last Saturday, but give him a lot of credit. As he left Nashville after spending the summer in Nashville, Triple A. Steve Scarsoni was his manager, and here he is on the mound in a familiar spot, Southern California, Angel Stadium. Grew up in Southern California. Here he is back on the mound facing the team that he is very familiar with. Yeah, he's made 30 career starts. This is his 31st career start against the Angels. Beat them 12 times, and he faces Eric Ibar. And that one tapped just foul. A first pitch changeup. Yeah. So if you think about it, Ray, and we mentioned this on the pregame show with Barry Zito, we've seen him pitch so many times. A's, Giants, taking them out. And this could be the last time he ever pitches. Yeah, exactly. And I always thought he fit the definition of a stylish left hand, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. That high leg kick. That. This is his 421st career start. Curveball tapped, and that one is just foul. 
So one and two the count defensively behind Zito. Smolinski, Fold, and Reddick in the outfield. Valencia, Simeon, Sogard, and Canna on the infield. Stephen Vogt back behind the dish. Stephen was very proud to be able to catch Barry Zito on Saturday, thinking that really that might have been his last start. And once again this afternoon, back behind the plate. I would consider this a day game after night game. You're looking at a late afternoon day game after night game. <laughs> Something like that. Reddick shading his eyes. It's a bright sun right now. Reddick yeah. takes care of it. In Oakland A's history, make that athletics history, lefty pitchers to start a game at the age of 37 or older, Eddie Plank, Tommy John, and Barry Zito. Don't forget, Tommy John yeah. was with the A's in 1985. And his name will forever be linked to baseball because yeah. they have a surgery named after him, the Tommy John surgery. First pitch to Calhoun. Inside corner first strike. So Zito seven years with the A's 2000 to 2006 and then seven years with the Giants and now back with the athletics. 165 career wins. And a quick 0 2 to Cole Calhoun. It's funny Barry said he has scrapped the cut fastball that looked like a cutter although. Probably a curveball that just a little, a little bit flatter. Didn't have the big arc to it. When he throws it, and he throws it well, he'll buckle some knees, especially with the left-handers. And not a lot of lefties hitting against him. Breaking ball there. Vote blocks it. I think about Stephen Vote and everything that he has been through throughout his career. A couple of times thinking about calling it quits and. Here he's catching a pitcher who he admires as much as anybody, considering he was out of baseball for a year, came back, went to AAA, never complained. And now Stephen Vogt back behind the plate catching. Nice play by Valencia. Throws to first, and it's in the dirt. Pops out of the glove of Canna, so Calhoun is aboard. And it'll be an error. Well, that's one of the problems that happened last Saturday with Barry on the mound. The defense really let him down a little bit. And this one with the shift on and, and but you know just a slight to his left and he can make the strong throw from third base without any issues that ball happened to bounce and because it did can not able to come up with it through a sinker bounced out in front and Cannon was not able to come up with the ball. So the third air in the series by the athletics that one goes to Valencia and here's trout. First pitch is up and away to Trout, hitting 295 with 40 homers and 88 RBIs. Trout is one for seven in the series. That one hit a double. Curve, and it just stays outside a little bit. Uh, the signature pitch for Barry Zito and stayed outside, evidently, according to Chris Guccione. Missed again, and now it's 3 0. Who holds to follow? And Trout taking all the way, and he takes a strike. Well, we see Albert Pujols, green light, not even look to Gary Sarcina, though some hitters just are not comfortable swinging at a 3 0 pitch. I think Mike Trout, if he is not right now, he will be before his career is over. He's still very young. And that one misses inside. The vote thought maybe it was a strike, but it turns out to be ball four. So an air and a walk, two on, one out. Well, that look at Bob Melvin wondering where was it? Height that was okay. And it looked like he's on the corner for a strike. And wow. 
Guccione looking right at it. So now Pujol steps in early opportunity for the Angels against Zito. That one on the inside corner. It's a strike. Now Stephen Vogt after the three one was not called a strike. I'm sure he had a, just a minimal conversation with Chris Guccione just maybe with his head straight not really uh, showing up Guccione maybe say he thought it was a strike. Good change up there by Zito kept it down and away. Two holes popped his time. Eight for 20 against Zito in his career as Pujols with three home runs. That would have had to be with the Cardinals, right? Cardinals, uh, Cardinals and Giants. Uh, because yeah, that would, uh, he made a start against the Angels with the Giants in 2012. So that would have been Pujols first year here. So maybe that, that's something that, happened. That's right. But I was hit a lot of home runs, so <laughs> this is just three. Right now, Barry looking for a ground ball, more of a fly ball pitcher. One, two, curve is tapped foul. But another one that stayed up a little bit, and in fact, it is off speed, but it breaks down so sharply, and that's that's always been a concern about umpires making sure they don't see it up at the higher level and quit on it and call it a pitch out of the strike zone when it's going to drop down very, very sharply, and most times it's going to end up in the strike zone. So another one-two pitch. Here it is to Pujols, and it's grounded to third. Valencia has it, fires to second for one, back to first, double play. So Zito made some good pitches to Pujols, and he gets the 5-4-3 double play, and he keeps the Angels off the board. No scores. We go to the second inning. Time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag CSNCA. Data strong fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. Second inning, no score. Valencia voted Laurie against Garrett Richards. Both pitchers getting big double plays in the first inning. And Valencia waves at that breaking ball, and he's, he has seen a lot of breaking balls lately, yep. and he has not adjusted. Adjusted by going to the opposite field with those pitches all outside. And you know the old saying, Kai, we throw it, 
Do you make an adjustment? Yeah. You don't make an adjustment, keep throwing it. Valencia 0 for 5 in this series. Got a couple of walks. One two pitch and a fastball running up and in at 97 miles an hour. Well, he went down on the way with a breaking ball in the dirt and then fastball up and in. Changed the eyesight considerably. Average fastball velocity for Garrett Richards 95.5. Third highest fastballs in the majors. Araldos Chapman has to be number one. I would think. Yeah. The thing with Richards Ray is he, he throws extremely hard, but he also has good sink. He gets yeah. a lot of ground ball, so he, in some strange way, he's a strikeout guy, but also ground ball guy. He'll throw the, the four seam with the 97. He'll throw a cut fastball and the two seamer, like you said, and that's where he gets the ground balls. He's got. I mean, he's got good stuff. See, there's the ground ball percentage, third best in the league. So you got the third best ground ball percentage and the great fastball velocity. Yeah. So if he's on, he will just pound the bottom half of the strike zone. You know what he did when he walked Sam Fulham with four seam fastballs, came back to Mark Canna, threw him an off speed pitch. Actually, it might have been the breaking ball that he grounded out, but. That's when he can go to the two seamer and get the ground ball. So it's a nice mixture to have. A lot of the Angels are really happy to have him in the rotation and have him healthy. And vote swings and misses, and that was a breaking ball. So back to back strikeouts for Garrett Richards. Well, it's a breaking ball that's hard. He threw it hard, and that's the one thing. That we always talk about a breaking ball with two strikes, you throw it hard, hitters cannot adjust. Good block by Perez to keep it in front. And that, of course, the confidence for Garrett Richards. And if I think about this being Wednesday and the wild card play in game, should the Angels get to that point, would be Tuesday. And guess whose start probably would be this guy right That's here. Good call. And he will not pitch in that series yeah. in Texas. You know, I talk about a banged up pitching staff, though. We told you about the relievers. Houston Street's out. Joe Smith is yeah. supposed to be available today, but. Matt Shoemaker, the starting pitcher, the right hander, he is not going to pitch in the regular season. Maybe in the postseason, but and even Jared Weaver, he's a little bit questionable for this weekend. His arm has been bothering him a little bit, so they are a banged up rotation right now, but Richards is healthy, and that's a good thing for them. 2 0 breaking ball, and it's 2 and 1. I think there are some teams that. Should make it with a big beard. For Piano, of course, he's not a bad guy to spot start. He may get more in a spot start. He could be pitching in the series finale in Arlington. Yeah, well, he, I mean, on the the Angels' notes, he is scheduled to pitch on Sunday. Yeah. In the series finale, in the regular season finale. That would be his normal turn Tuesday to Sunday. Three and two to Lori. Brett hitting 263 with 16 homers and 58 RBIs. And he lays off a couple of breaking balls. Now Billy Butler was talking about Trumpiano and that breaking pitch and just one that the way he threw it kind of flipped it and kept it off the plate and stuck a fastball on the 3 2 there. But he had a nice assortment, and when you go from five strikeouts being your high, to six and two thirds innings of 11 strikeouts, that's pretty impressive. So a two out base runner's Lori, and here's Eric Sogard. First pitch is a strike. I don't know that managers and pitching coaches and clubs in general. Like to think about adversity and not having people ready, but you never hear anybody say, "Oh, poor us," because there's so many injuries in the game. And while you might lose some starters, you take guys given the opportunity. And what Tropiano did last night, as you mentioned, Garrett Richards is healthy. So Laurie will head down to second after the ball scoots past 
Carlos Perez. Well, uh, might have been the hard cut fastball that just got away from him and between the legs of the home plate umpire, but bad pass Perez. Lots of them. 17th wild pitch. Most of the majors for Garrett Richards. Should have better catchers. That's right. It's not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's just bouncing. Yeah. He's trying to keep the ball down. You know, Perez is showing he can block the ball, then he doesn't do what he's supposed to do. And it's not a pass ball. That time he did a great job of blocking the ball. But I think more and more teams start a season, and the old mantra is that whoever or whichever team can stay the healthiest would probably be the champion because they would have the frontline people there. But there's never a manager who'll walk away and say, we cannot handle these situations. You'd rather give other guys opportunities. Mike Sosha is in that position right now, trying to go to postseason without really his best team. That was a pretty nice block. Very nice block. So take away the wild pitch. I mean, that ball bounced out in front, came straight up, and Perez, I mean, that ball was six feet in front of home plate. And that's not an easy one to block, although usually if it hits that far out in front, it's going to be one that's up higher. Two two to Sogard is tapped toward Ibar. Ibar throws a little wide. Crone keeps his foot on the bag side, retired. So a runner stranded. We're going to the bottom of the second. No score. A's an angel. The last of the big three made his major league debut at the Coliseum, and that was Barry Zito, and it was against <laughs> the Angels, and it was the famous fifth inning. And Barry Zito walked the bases loaded, and then, let's see, I saw Salmon, I saw Mo Vaughn, and Garrett Anderson. That's right. right. All three with different pitches, fastball, curve, and a changeup. So that was the major league debut of Barry Zito. He went five innings, gave up just two hits, but he had six walks and six strikeouts. On 103 pitches. So most wins versus opponents. Zito beat the Rangers 18 times. The Angels and the Mariners 12. So he for good measure, for his orange and black, he beat the Dodgers 10 times. And for Barry Zito to start against the Angels, and perhaps we will be witnessing his final start against the Angels. And that's why. I mean, first of all, he wanted to start, period. It didn't matter who he was facing, but just so happened to be the Angels. He said from Southern California, it's to go against the team that he would love to beat, to prevent them from maybe advancing a little bit closer to postseason. Pumps a strike in there to Crone, three and one.
So Hudson came in 1999 and Mulder at the beginning of yeah. 2000. Lead off walk to Chrome. You have some information on the Blue Jays? I do. Blue Jays are the American League East champions. They have a double header today in Baltimore. They only needed to win one game to clinch the division, and they won game one 15 to 2. Encarnacion hit his 37th home run. Batista hit his 40th home run. And Marcus Stroman. How about that? Eight innings. How about that? How key could yeah. Marcus Stroman be? Yeah. I mean, the Blue Jays know they got the number one in price, and that's that's all good. But R.A. Dickey's been you know, so so. Sure. Burley's maybe. He's banged up a little bit. He's yeah. got to start against the A's. So uh, Stroman has pitched great. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you start thinking how important he could be in the postseason for the Blue Jays. So, congratulations to the Toronto Blue Jays. They are headed back to the postseason, and they were already locked into a postseason spot, but now they're the division winners. But the last time they went to postseason was 1993 when yep. they won the World Series. Back-to-back, yep. 92-93. -back, Carter with a big walk off and actually the unfortunate strike occurred in 94 and no World Series was played. They had a chance to three feet. Yeah, they must have had pretty close to the same team. Yeah. Right? But then after 94 or 95 they did not. Blue Jays are also battling for the best record in the American League. The Blue Jays and the Royals are fighting for that spot. Toronto has 92 wins. Kansas City has 90 wins and the Blue Jays own the tiebreaker so they're sitting in a pretty good spot for home field advantage throughout the postseason as well. So that's always something to play for. And hey, home field advantage, why not? And remember, too, that home field advantage means that if you win the division, you've got the league championship. The World Series is a lock for the American yep. League because of the winning the national of the uh, All Star game. Well, the Blue Jays are 53 and 28 at home. 39 and 37 on the road. I mean, everybody would rather play at home. I mean, they finished their season with 12 consecutive sellouts. And you pointed out to 300,000 tickets sold when they acquired Troy Tulowitzki. Capped foul. And it sounds like Tulowitzki is going to try to play maybe this weekend. So he should be back for the postseason. What is it, Kat? They compared uh, Stroman's injury to, is it Woodson? The Raiders had a similar injury, came back, played in the Super Bowl, and here's Stroman coming back, spring training, and here he is yeah. playing, pitching in, in September. That? Yeah. Charles Woodson, I think, was the, the Raider who came back. I know that it was kind of compared to him to be able to come back as quickly as he did from a knee injury, a serious knee injury. But that's like, like taking a kid to spring training. I mean, he's missed the whole season, yep. and he's made a few starts, and talk about somebody that's going to be strong. Grounded to short. Simeon has it. Second, first, double play. So for the second inning in a row, Barry Zito makes a big pitch to get a double play. So two outs. And Barry can change speeds effectively enough, even off his fastball. Just got to throw a BP fastball on a 3 2 count. The runner, Chrome, was not on the move, so that helped the A's turn a very, very smooth 6 4 3 double play. And Simeon started it. Sogard with a nice turn, as he did on the ball in the first inning from Valencia. And on to Canada for the double play. So for a fly ball pitcher, that's exactly what he's looking for. Get some ground balls and get double plays. First pitch to Victorino. Just missed. Close pitch. Kite the Wizard last night had that note about uh, Cargo hitting his 40th. Now the Blue Jays with uh, Donaldson 41 and Bautista with 40. Yeah. So there's another team with 40 home run uh, Hitters on the same team. They could add a third. Sure. Bautista. Or uh, not Incarnacion. Bautista. Incarnacion. Yeah. Well, he he could hit like oh. five in a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Put that parrot on his arm as he runs around the bases. <laughs> well, the Blue Jays would be fun to watch, though, in the postseason. I mean, they're, they're a fun team to watch because they grip it and rip it, yeah. boy. And they're very dangerous because their lineup is, is just... Yeah. Ridiculously good. You see the run differential? Oh. Plus 231. About that. Uh, it's a great change up, Victorino. I, I thought, you know, they talked about getting Tulowitzki, but how about David Price? Sure. Wow. Great change up. You can see it coming out of his hand, the circle change, and a very good pitch thrown on two and one. 
Out again. Got 20 year old closer, Masuna. Yeah. So a lot of excitement in Toronto, and Ed Lynch, who is with the, the Blue Jays, scouting the Angels. He has been here for the series. Pitches outside, and it's walk number three for Zito. Now those pitches outside the right handers have been the fastballs. That's always difficult, regardless of who it is, as far as nailing the outside corner with the fastball. Because it's more of a feel and kind of a touch, and you don't want the ball running too far. You don't want to overthrow it, put it in the middle of the plate. So unless the target is given inside, which I don't think Barry wants to do because he's not overpowering with his fastball. He's trying to stay away with everything. First pitch to the young catcher, Carlos Perez, is his trying. Base hit left field. So on an 0 1 pitch, Perez singles. That's the first hit for the Angels, but it is their fifth base run. Uh, they tried to go inside with this one and left it in the middle of the plate about Bell tie. This part of the batting order could be a little bit tough because sometimes when you can change speeds effectively, like Barry Zito can, you want the power hitters, the big swingers. The guys that are going to be swinging hard and you can pull the string on them very, very easily. Sometimes the bottom part of the order, hitters have a tendency to sit back a little bit longer and wait longer on pitches as Perez did. So now Zito has to get Giovatella, who has had a lot of big hits against the A's this year. First pitch is a strike. They're shading him to pull the ball, and while he might consider that, considering velocity from Zito, but he can also stay back off speed and go to the opposite field easily. Tap slowly towards short. Simeon has it to second side retired. So Zito gets out of the jam. A couple of runners stranded, and we're on to the third inning. No score. Bat the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, replay reviews, scores, statcast, live radio broadcast, and more. MLB.com at bat. Now. A couple of A's fans just breaking down the game. They're talking about Zito's changeup. Made a couple big pitches. That's right. Curveball to Giovatello. Weak ground out to shortstop. Force out. 
Now scoring some runs. First pitch to Simeon and slider away. Simeon, Smolinski, and Fold here in the third inning. Popped up in the shallow right center. Trout is there, and Trout has it. So one away for Smolinski. The Minnesota Twins beat the Indians in game one of their doubleheader. Do not forget about the Minnesota Twins. They're just getting ready to start game two of that doubleheader. So, so Ray, with their win in game one, the Twins are one game behind the Angels with another game to play. Yeah. This could be a really good day for the Minnesota Twins <laughs> if everything falls into place for them. And you know what I'd like to see? The lineup of the first game of the second game of the Twins, and just see how many of those guys saying, hey, Molly, I'll play. I would think most yeah. of them you would, you would hope. That's right. I mean, it can rest Monday if they don't make it. So playing a doubleheader on a Wednesday, the final week of the season. The Astros will play tonight in Seattle, of course. That'll be the rubber game of that series with Scott Casimir pitching for Houston. There's a liner foul. So there's a lot going on. All good stuff. It's fun to pay attention and see where this whole thing is headed. So that is now updated with that Twins win. So they are right in the middle of this whole thing. The Twins will play in Cleveland again tomorrow. And then they will finish at home against the Royals. So at least they're going home, but they'll be playing the first place team. And you'd have to see what Ned Yost and his team's going to be doing. They'll be getting ready for postseason and playing a weekend that to them means nothing but the Twins a lot. And I'd say the Royals have to start thinking about their first round of the postseason, the division. And there's a good fastball, and it is strikeout number three for Garrett Richards. Well, it went front door and fastball, maybe a slight cut on it, but going front door regardless, and Molenski not able to catch up. Pat, was it 2011 we were in Seattle when the uh, the Rays had that remarkable comeback? Delares has said yes, because I was thinking. Yeah, because the, the A's were not in it. a pennant race. Right, and I was thinking the last three years, 12, 13, and 14, the A's have. And here we're looking at other teams now as we, we were, did. You know, we were, we were <laughs> looking for something to do. <laughs> right. We, we were watching the game, Baltimore and in Tampa. Well, that was when that was when the Red Sox collapsed. Exactly. 2011. That's exactly right. But we you know, that game in Seattle and all that activity. But that was the uh, the weekend of the last. I'm sure it's finished on a Wednesday, I think, that year. So it was uh, I think it was Wednesday because it changed. Usually it's on a weekend when it ends, but that was exciting. But the last three, the A's have been looking at all the teams who they might be playing because they're going to postseason. And this year, like we did in 2011, talking about the other teams and the possibilities for them as the weekend, the uh, season comes to an end. Two and two, the count. Well, the Angels are in that strange situation that the A's were in at the end of the year last year where they're going to go to Texas and play this four game series. They have no idea where they're going after That's the true. game on Sunday. That's right. They could be going multiple places, multiple possibilities, I should say. I was told, uh, I think Ed Lynch and Mike Paul scouts were telling me that, and you probably know this, but said that any playoff game for a tiebreaker is played here. And I think if there's multiple teams, if somebody has a chance of playing two home yeah, games versus one, pick, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can pick and do yeah. a lot of different things. Richards fires to first just in time to get full three up, three down inning. So we're headed to the bottom of the third. It'll be Ibar, Calhoun, and Trout for Barry Zito. No score.
40,000 acres and destroyed more than 800 homes, helped provide relief to victims who suffered significant losses by donating through the AIDS Community Fund at athletics.com slash fire. Every dollar collected will be donated to disaster relief funds. Donate now at athletics.com slash fire. No score, bottom of the third inning. Zito has walked three, has not struck anybody out, but he's got a couple of big double play balls. Facing Ibar, Calhoun, and Trout. Curveball. Missed outside. Now, right now is batting practice time for the Angels and the A's will be taken. So that's exactly what they're saying. September, of course, this being the final day of the month of September, the shadows are much different. Right field bleachers still get the sun, regardless of the time of the year. Usually, why a lot of people don't sit out there during day games because the sun beats on them all day long. That's the right field, but shadows gradually creeping. A couple of good 70s A's fans. Ibar hit a fly ball to right field in the first inning. He is three for ten in the series. Swing and a miss. Sometimes Barry Zito would kind of speed up his delivery and occasionally throw a changeup. That time he did the same as he would with a changeup and throw a fastball up in. And Ibar could not catch up to it. And Barry's just in his mid 80s with his fastball. He's not overpowering. Never really has been. That one looped down the left field line, but it's just foul. The Rangers will host the Tigers again tonight. That game will start in just a little bit. Rubber game of that three game series. Boyd for Detroit. Gallardo for the Rangers. The first place Texas Rangers. So Gallardo, 12 and 11 on the year. More action for Simeon. Quick throw, and they just got eyeball. There's a rollover on a changeup. Excellent changeup from Barry Zito. I had Ibar out on his front foot, and he does get down the line, and especially the way he swings. Watch how he's running out of the box as soon as he makes contact. He's running. Simeon took a little extra time, had to hurry his throw, and fortunately it was a good one because he wanted to make sure he had the grip, had a good enough one, but Ibar really busted it down the line and made it a very close play, but still able to get him by the step. That's all it takes. First pitch to Calhoun, the curveball, and Calhoun missed it. Average fastball today, 83 miles an hour, and that's that's it's been that way for a while. Yes, it has. Forty-seven pitches for Zito, and I give you the pitch count. Really, it's more of a joke than anything because if this is his last <laughs> ever major league start. Really, what difference does it make? It's really sure. the eyeball test today. If he's pitching good, he's going to stay out. There. And he should. It's like Madison Bumgarner, Game Seven of the World Series last year in Kansas City. 40, 50 pitches. Yeah, yeah. right. How about 400 if it necessary sure. for to win. He wasn't going to come out of the game. One, two pitch, and that's a swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number one today for Zito. Well, he used every one of his pitches. He got him with a curveball, then a fastball, and then. Pulled the string on the change up in a part of the play. That ball just floated in, and Calhoun tried to wait as long as he could, but could not. So Zito, the crafty one today, and that's the master. The ability to change speeds that effectively, and so far today, throw quality strikes. First pitch to Trout drops in there first strike. Uh, very nothing has changed since he first came up. I guess that, except for the one spring that tried to go into full windup and David and Gatiss said, what are you doing? Uh-oh. Yep. Center field and deep and Trout homers to give the Eagles a one to nothing lead. Home run number 41 for Mike Trout.
got ahead and then wanted to go upstairs and the pitch right down the middle. And Gary is really not one to try to elevate pitches, and as a result, left it in the middle of the plate, and it was crushed. And that's the strength of Mike Trout providing his own power, no cheaping. In the center field batter's eye. So that'll bring up Albert Pujol. And the one inning retires the first two batters. And third out is elusive at this point. He likes Zito. Uh, he's so strong and he can wait so long yeah. that that really helps a hitter whenever facing someone who's not really overpowering. You look at the average velocity of fastball 83 84, then it means they can just wait. Two and one now to Albert Pujols, who hit into a 5 4 3 double play in the first inning. So three and one. Be careful here. And it drops low. And it's walk number four for Zito. So when Barry first came up, Ray, his days with these, maybe his first three or four years. Fastball velocity, what, 89, 90? Yeah, yeah. He didn't throw much harder than 90. And but his changeup was excellent. His mm -hmm. curveball was unhittable. But I mean that's you know, we're talking five, six miles per hour on a right. fastball, and that's a lot. Right. But the one thing he's always been able to do is spot his fastball. That big looping 12 6 curveball, the changeup. I mean, all those pitches, when he was pitching his best, all those pitches, he could just throw them where he wanted to. Missed again, 2 and 1. Crone walked in the second inning. Crone is three for seven in the series. Strike with a fastball right in the outside corner, 83 miles an hour. And this time nails the outside corner. This is the pitch have been leaking off the plate a little bit too much. Crone chases a pitch in the dirt. Bolt will fire to first. Side retires. So a couple of strikeouts for Barry Zito, but Mike Trout, home run number 41 on the year, and the Angels lead 1 0.
Yankees do not have a hit yet against Garrett Richards. He's walked two. He has struck out three. Shutdown inning. Possibility for Richards, 71% this year, just a tick below the league average. First pitch to Canna is just a little bit high. Canna, Reddick, and Valencia here in the fourth inning. Forty five pitches thrown for Richards, so averaging around fifteen per inning. Slider that dips low on outside. Two and one the count. The thing about Richards is seeing when he throws a breaking ball more times than not, they're not strikes. But hit us a swing at him, it creates a strike. But almost if you could just take it, see the spin, not swing at it, and just sit on his fastball. Missed again, three and one. And he throws a chase slider even before he gets two strikes. Tries to eliminate the middle part of the plate. Ibar comes in and gets a nice hop, throws across the diamond, and Canna is out for the first out here in the top of the fourth inning. Gun below showed 97 with that fastball, but he hit it like a thud. I mean, it just it just that wasn't crisply hit on a 3-1 fastball that. He just basically rear back and threw it with a little bit extra. So with one out, Reddick will hit. Brian, the Wizard gave us this note about Travis Shaw. The Red Sox hit a three-run home run against Tanaka today. Red Sox over the Yankees, but showed his numbers at Triple A. 289 bats, five home runs in the big leagues. 206 at bats, 13 home runs. And Steve Scarsoni, who managed the A's Triple A club, Sacramento, and now Nashville. I thought he brought up an interesting point. He said he thinks that hitters get the big leagues and because pitchers who are around the strike zone. Wow. That was an interesting approach. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of went and stopped, and Crone, the only one who's had a chance to get to it. This guy Sony seemed to think that pitchers in the big leagues can throw strikes and it helps the hitters become better hitters. Whereas the minor leagues, you know, they tried to find the strike zone and if a pitcher is off, maybe they're swinging the pitches out of the strike zone. Whereas here, I mean, if, if you can't throw strikes at this level, you're not going to be here. Yeah. And so this young man, Travis Shaw, seems to have been, at least he's enjoying the, uh, the major league pitching and seems to be hitting it quite well. So the A's have their first hit in Reddick. So maybe the. The stuff is better at the big league level, but it's also around the plate. It's, yeah, I mean, you can be pretty comfortable and almost to the point that if you have one that buzzes you, I think it's going to be intentional. Yeah. Because if the pitchers are good enough, then they throw at you or close to you, maybe there's some intent behind it. While those hitters might see pitches that they can handle better. The defense behind the pitcher is much better yeah. than what they're experiencing in the minor league. So that so evens it out a little bit. Exactly. But, you know, everything is, I mean, if you're at this level, there's 750 to start the season on the rosters in the big leagues. And, you know, you talk about 750 the best at this level, and then everybody trying to get here. But if you get here, you have to perform. One and two now to Valencia, who struck out in the second inning. Reddick, pretty good lead at first. Another breaking ball, and it's outside. Now Danny Valencia can hit anything close to what he did during batting practice off Bob Melvin. 
<laughs> Bob Melvin's got good stuff. <laughs> Catcher four seam fastball right over the top about 60 miles an hour. No break no nothing but good BP. For a former catcher. But that's a difference. His BP when you know what's coming versus the guy on the mound throwing 97 and with a cut or a slider. Missed again and now full count. See if maybe Reddick takes off one out with vote in the on deck circle. Well, your point about a ground ball pitcher, this is the time to do it. And Mike Butcher, the pitching coach for the Angels, been there a long time with Mike Sosha. But you know, think of Valencia, you put the pressure, at least the emphasis on him making contact, so you stay out of a double play. Reddick not running. Bounce to Giovatella, who knocks it down, chases after it, and everybody's safe. It's going to be an error. Giovatella had a long ways to go to his left. If he fields it clean, he's going to yeah. throw Valencia out. And that's going to be his only play. And, you know, there's a the case, too, with Reddick not running and did not give a middle infielder the opportunity to go cover second to open up either the left or the right side. And I don't know if you have a been the one covering, but by not coming up with the ball, clearly was a play if he makes at least one out. The A's will take a base run. To his left, reached for it, had it, dropped it. Then, even worse, tried to pick it up, looked up to see what Reddick was doing. Maybe at that point, figured there's no chance to get Valencia. So each team with an air in the ball game, and now a chance for Steven Vogt. Both takes a fastball inside. Both struck out swinging in the second inning. He's have had one at bat with runner in scoring position today. That was in the second inning. So this is their second. They're one for 11 in the series with runners in scoring position. Scored a total of five runs in the first two games. Missed again, and now it's 3 and 0. And this is not a pitch around. It already has runners at first and second. And it's Brett Laurie who walked actually in his first at bat. Every pitch important to that man, Mike Sosha. Teams that have been there know exactly what he's experiencing now. And that one is outside, and the bases are loaded with one out for Lori. So Richards has three walks, and he'll get a visit from his pitching coach. Uh, this is just more for Mike Butcher than. Anything unless he's seen something that he's doing just to break it up a little bit. Something that a catcher can do. Pitching coach can do. Just three more strikes and then the balls and as a result he's walked three. So Lori who walked in the second inning a great chance to knock in a couple runs. Give Barry Zito the lead. Yeah, how about that. One of two things on the first pitch from Garrett Richards after a four pitch walk to vote. Three slams by Brett Lorry. He can look for a fastball and unload if Garrett Richards just tries to throw a strike. Richards could throw a little cutter, assuming that Lorry's going to be looking for a first pitch fastball. The first pitch is yeah. rolled foul past Ron Washington. Pretty good breaking ball. That was more the slider, not the cutter. Or curveball.
Reddick's at third, Valencia at second, and vote at first. Outfield shifted just slightly toward left center. The big gap is right center. Freeze charges. He's coming home and out there, and that'll be the only out, but it's a big one. So Freeze knew he couldn't get a double play, so he made sure he got the the lead runner at the plate. That's a great point, Kat, because that's why the space is loaded. The runner has to run from third, but Freeze, the veteran third baseman, knows if he goes around the horn, Brett Lloyd runs too well, probably would have avoided being doubled up. And he is running hard to first to avoid being doubled up on a 5 2 3. Perez decided not to throw. And it's up to Sogar. Another RBI opportunity for Sogar. 11 for 24 with the bases loaded. And there is a first pitch strike. Feels shallow, especially Victorino in left field. Trout in in center, a couple of steps. And now it's 0 2. Hard breaking ball down and in. First pitch, fastball he took, then a breaking ball out of the strike zone, and Perez able to handle it easily. Two pitch is line fair down the right field line. One run scores, two runs score. Here comes Lori, and he will score. Sogard has cleared the bases, and the A's lead three to one. An off speed pitch, a fastball, and then a Good breaking ball in the dirt, and it came back 0-2, and Sogard able to stay on. This curve ball left at the middle of the plate, and you see Richards hoping the ball would hook foul. It did not. No fan interference, and Eric Sogard with a big two out, two or bases clearing double, and that had to feel great for him and for the A's to score three on the one swing of the bat. And now Simeon steps in. So RBIs 35, 36, and 37 on the season for Sogard. And that's a big hit. Isn't it amazing how pitchers talk about repeating their delivery, repeating the pitches? He saw Sogard swing at a pitch in the dirt for strike two, try to come back with the same one, left it up right in the middle of the plate. So down the corner, that's one score. From second comes another, Stephen Vogt, and all the way around, Brett Lorry in the head first slide. And Sogar with a big two out hit. That's what the A's have been looking for. Something they've not been getting a lot. One and two now to Marcus Simeon, who hit a fly ball to center field. Back in the third inning. Well, Ray, as I look at this inning. Are these are all three of these runs unearned? I think they are, right? Uh, yep. So the Giovatelli error, which right. would have been the second out in the inning. That's right. The Lori Fielder's choice would have been the third out. Yep. Simeon chases that one. So he strikes out, but Eric Sogard with a three run double. And the A's now lead three to one as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
one A's lead bottom of the fourth inning. So the A's have some fans that are in Houston tonight yeah. and fans of the Astros and Twins are also fans of the A's tonight. Trying to beat the Angels who have the second wild card spot just barely. Freeze, Victorino, and Perez here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Freeze hit into a 6 4 3 double play. That was in the second. Angels needed what 22,000 23,000 today in attendance to go over the 3 million right. mark which would be the 13th straight year that has happened so they will they will get that high in the air to left field and freeze deep into the bullpen and it's 3 to 2 14th home run of the year for Freeze. But he just waited. Just waited. And he really didn't try to unload on it. And it was up. Maybe unintentionally up as Stephen Vogt had to target down. But that was a no doubter. Well, that sounded good. <laughs> sounded great. And it ended better. Here's Victorino. Now for Barry so far in this game, when he's gotten ahead of the hitters, he's been able to put them away. And of course, he walked a couple in the second inning, ended up getting a big double play. But get ahead, you have a chance. Good news for the two runs by the Angels for Solos. Yep. Solo home runs. The error by Givatella attributed to the three unarmed runs for the A's in the top half of the inning. Simeon dives, can't get it, and it's a base hit. Homer single to start the bottom of the fourth. A hanging curveball, and after a pretty good changeup. And for Victor Reno, he's been known to hit changes uh, curveballs quite well. They're starting to move around out in the A's bullpen. 69 pitches for Zito. Perez had a base hit in the second inning. Zito needs another ground ball right here. He's got a couple of double plays tonight. There was a time when Victorino was a terrific base yeah. dealer, not so much anymore. Get seven this year. Uh, he just wants to stay healthy. Something that was not the case in Boston when he was there. Zito has it. Throws to second. Simeon with a nice play back to first time in time. That was a heck of a play by Marcus Simeon. He really had to stop his momentum just to be able to catch the ball. That's hard to do. Uh, usually the pitcher will know who's covering, but Barry Zito had to range towards first base to catch it and then off balance throw by him leading back. But you're right, Simeon almost turned the double play. But Zito really has never been known as a great fielder, made a nice play on that. That's going to be a base hit if he doesn't come up with it. And then off balance throw to second. Nice recovery by Zito. And good sinker, huh? Yeah. The second. <laughs> yeah. And even if he leads Simeon, I don't think they double up Perez. I think it was going to be. A tough play to turn to considering how soft the ball is hit. But it seems like with Barry as a pitcher, his height affected his field. 
because he, you know, Guys bunted or swinging bunts like that sometimes to, to get to the ball and to bend over. And the height can be good for a pitcher with a downward slope and getting on top of the ball. Oh, and two now to Giovatella. Grounded out to the shortstop. So Otero is starting to get loose. One two to the Angels second baseman. Fastball a little bit in. Yeah, some would say that with a good change up good curveball, a fastball that's thrown 83-84 can look like 93-94. Yep. Because of the off-speed pitches, and that's what pretty much Barry relies on because that last fastball was clocked at just 82, but it seemed like it was a lot harder. By Zito, he drops it, throws to first, and it's not an out yet. And now it is, and it's a double play. Still not sure if they ruled that Zito caught it. I think Luciano put his arm up, which would indicate that was a catch. But I don't know that it was completion, as Barry had it. And then I don't think that was out. I'm just glad I can't have threw to second. Either way, <laughs> two outs recorded. <laughs> Bottom of the fourth ended, and Zito says it's a 1 3 double play. That was the ruling. I think Chris Gucciano, they're making an announcement of 1 3, but I don't know that he clearly had it. Was it the transfer? Yeah, he dropped the transfer, and I think that's why Chris Gucciano called it an out. So it is a 1 3 double play. Mark Canna hesitated, which went in doubt, complete, and then left to make the call. This is what was going on in the dugout in between innings. So there was a handshake. So that may mean that Barry Zito is done for the night. Well, it would be his call. So he must feel that the pitch count was such that. And he had to be thinking unselfishly that the pitch count might. Get to the point that uh, at 76 that he could not pitch well enough to hold him down for another inning and uh, so we'll turn it over to the bullpen. Looks like after four. Another pop up right side and this one again will be just into the seats. Smolinski, Fold, and Canna here in the fifth inning, and that's Daniel Coulomb.
So looks like that's who we'll see in the bottom of the fifth. One two pitch broken bat grounder toward Ibar who missed it. About as routine of a ground ball as you're going to get and it's going to be an error. Second error in this ball game. Now the Angels and their fourth year in the series. You watch him do this a hundred times in 99. He's going to make that transfer. He's going to pick the ball up with his glove, transfer to his right hand, throw out, and everything. A little bit of a right there. Pick it up, take it to the side, transfer, throw out. This time did not. Very unusual. So leadoff man aboard, and here's Sam Fold. Freeze comes in on the grass at third, and the fastball is high. Tiger scored two in the top of the first in Arlington. But the Rangers come right back and score two in the bottom of the first. And they're still batting. So that game underway with some early offense. Astros and Mariners will. Start in about an hour and a half. Sam Full takes a strike in the outside corner. Dodgers won the National League West last night. They beat the Giants behind Clayton Kershaw, so there will be no repeat. World Series champion again this year. So just the Central Division waiting to be decided yeah. as far as the three teams are in, just a matter who's going to win the division. It's the 15th straight year with no back to back champions. Last one was the Yankees, and they, of course, won three straight years 98, 99, and 2000. It still remains the only two teams in baseball history to win at least three consecutive yeah. the A's and the Yankees. Yankees had five when there was an American and National League, no division, league, or anything. Just win the American, play the National, and the champions. The Yankees were a Luis Gonzalez base hit away from <laughs> That's right. four strikes. That's right. End of the year when horrible tragedy occurred on 9 11. You thought it was all meant to be for the Yankees, considering their comebacks at Yankee Stadium against the Diamondbacks, but it's not. Meant to be. Sam Full has walked and he has bounced back to the pitcher. Cut, you think that was in uh, 2001, Angels winning 2002, but in 2004, the Yankees had a three games to one lead over the Red Sox and a big stolen base by Dave Roberts in the ninth inning against the Yankees, Mariano Rivera. And Red Sox won eight straight. Giovatella has it. He's going to get the out at second base. So one away, fold on the fielder's choice. First baseman, number 20, Martin. Well, we actually know that the Dodgers are going to play the Mets in the division series. Wild card is going to play, looks like the Cardinals. And neither of the Mets or the Dodgers could catch the Cardinals as far as having the best record. So we already have a matchup. But which of the two has the best record? That's that's very close. They're right now the Mets have one more win than the Dodgers, so that'll be a close thing to keep an eye on. So those fine young pitchers for the Mets against the big two of the Dodgers. Well, you know, one thing for sure, it's going to be a long flight to go from New York to Los yeah. Angeles. Maybe twice. Yeah. At so. least they have the travel day now between games four and five, something they didn't have in the early 2000s. Driven, left center, and deep. Trout near the wall, and Trout leaps up, catches it in front of the wall, and hustling back to first is full. So Trout had that one under control. Hustle back and 
got in front of the wall and made the catch. That was a note that he's making an effort to play a little bit more shallow, which means a ball like this, look where he's playing and how far he has to run to get to the ball. It's not out of the park, so he's not having to go to the ball and jump as he did in the earlier series, but still a long run to get to the ball. So considering great plays that he's made and no errors and 418 chances. What's your point? <laughs> Is he going to get one of those gloves? I think so. Fold runs and he is out. Heck of a throw by Carlos Perez. Runs down Sam Fold and the A's get nothing in the top of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth coming up. 3 2 Athletics. His first game in Oakland against the Angels. He will not win this game, but he's pitched very well. Four innings and actually three double plays turned, including one by himself to end the last inning. But Barry Zito, four solid innings, four hits, a couple of earned runs, seven ground ball outs, a good curveball there to strike out Calhoun. And then the ball in the dirt, another strikeout there on a 2 3. The defense outstanding. Barry throwing to second base, getting the lead runner there. And even better, how about this? Line drive, dropped it on the transfer, and a double play, one to three, and that is it for Barry. And what a very nice pitching of four innings, and I think right now what we're seeing is a gentleman contemplating his future. You may be right. I think it's just, you know, seeing him sit on the bench and the towel, and, you know, it's it was his call, and really you have to think about his career and he could have selfishly said, yeah, I can go back out, you know, try to get the win, five innings and qualify for the win. But he probably said, hey, 76 pitches, I don't know if I have anything left. And remember, he he was out eight, nine days, was on the disabled list and trying to build up his arm strength to get to the point where he could come back and pitch. And if it's his last one, it was a good one. So he will sit back and watch the rest of this ball game. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot going through his mind. One and one is Daniel Colomb comes in the game when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and repair expert. So Colomb facing the top of the order. Ibar Calhoun and Trout here in the fifth. 3 2, the A's leading. The second game of that doubleheader in Cleveland. After the Twins won the first game. The Indians lead 4 0 in the bottom of the second. So the Twins, if they're going to have a big day in the wild card standings, they're going to need to come back. Line drive right center field. Full. 
who's there, and he makes the catch. Now one out, Dan Otero, who was loosening up earlier, gets back up. I think Brian the Wizard could probably figure out the lineups of the Twins in the first and the second game. Maybe just to kind of do a little comparison to see which of the starting nine are playing in the second game. I mean, a very important game. So, Wizard. <laughs> he said, when you turned around and looked back to the field, he said he didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's he not said, tell Ray, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I think yeah, it's no. Yeah, I think that would be important to see. Blue Jays and the Orioles are underway in the second game of their doubleheader with the Blue Jays winning game one and that clinched them the American League's Eastern Division. The Yankees are losing four to one to the Red Sox in New York. Yogi Berra, who passed away recently. Dr. Schwartz, I think it's 117 doubleheaders he caught. I mean, so Kurt Suzuki caught the first game for the Twins. I'd say he's probably not catching second. Two and one to Cole Calhoun, who has reached on an air and struck out. Pitches inside. Now it's three. Remember, at the end of July, the Yankees had a seven-game lead yeah. in the division, and they were sort of rolling along. Blue Jays were scuffling along, did not seem to get anything going. But that changed quickly, and now the Yankees gave up that big lead. And there's the walk. The walk number five by these pitchers. We talked about Mike Socia has some uh, important members of his staff not able to pitch. Bob Melvin right now is going to take the remainder of this game and try his best to mix a match in the bullpen. And High bar and Calhoun, a switch hitter, and Plume faces them. Palum does, and now Dan Otero. So Otero coming in to face Trout will be back. with 2016 priority seating choose your exact seating location for next season A's offer a variety of full and partial season plans that qualify for great benefits including half price parking flexible ticket exchange program and more for more information call right now 510-638-GO-A's or visit athletics.com slash 2016 all right Brian came up with it Dozier Maurer Sano Ploof Rosario Hunter Nunez Hicks in center field, Suzuki, Herman catching, Buxton, Escobar shortstop. So nice job, Brian. The Wizard does it again. So not a whole lot different. No. 
at the first uh, for six. six. Yeah, so they changed shortstop, center field, catcher. So Otero comes in with Calhoun at first and one out, and Trout at the plate. Trout a walk and a home run. He hit his 41st home run in the third. Hit hard up the middle in the center field for a hit. Two on, one out for Pujols. Well, every team knows, the A's know that. Angels like to go first to third. Sam Ford with this base hit, a bullet up the middle by Trout. And then elevated fastball. Got the ground ball, but up the middle. But watch how quickly Sam Ford charges with Calhoun thinking about going to third. And, and that's what you do with the Angels to take away the possibility of a first and third and one out. Now first and second. And Dan Otero with the sinker trying to get another ground ball only at somebody. Who holds four for ten against Otero. Tonight a double play and a walk. First pitch is inside. So Zito goes four innings. Cologne a third of an inning. Two and zero. Oh. Outfield is straight away, as is the infield, looking for a ground ball. And that one is hit high in the air, left center. And it's going to be Fold who grabs it. And Fold fires it back into the cutoff now. So Calhoun goes second to third, but Otero gets the big out of Pujols. In fact, there's a difference of not allowing Calhoun to go to third, where that sacrifice fly or that fly ball would have scored him. Instead, he goes to third, but now there are two outs. So probably got away with one. Pujols just happened to hit under it a little bit too much, kept it in the park. But Sam Fold has done so many things for the Athletics. Taken second on a fly ball to center, preventing a hitter from getting a double, kept him to single, and this time made sure he charged it quickly enough to keep Calhoun at second. First pitch to Crone is inside with Trout taken off, so Trout gets a stolen base. Uh, on the first move and didn't have to slide. Started two. No throw, nobody there. There's a fastball first strike, 93 miles an hour. Venditti starting the throw. Tying and go ahead runs are in scoring position for the Angels with two outs. Low at 92 miles an hour. So good swing there by Crone. He got a pitch up and looked like it was in the hitting zone. So two and two. It's Garrett Richards, the starter, who gave up the big hit to Sogard. Three run double. Foul back again. Crone has walked and he has struck out in today's game. Passos so seems to be a little bit sneaky from Dan Otero, which is good. Crone trying to wait and. A little bit late on the fastball so far, anyway. Has to go sinker down at the end, slider away. The only question, and 
The concern, make sure he gets the elbow up on the slider so it has a downward plane versus one that kind of loops and hangs in the middle of the plate. Broken bat, rolled fair right at the bag. Canna picks it up, steps on the bag, side retired. So Otero keeps the Angels off the board as they strand a pair. Three two A's as we go to the sixth. former A's players for the 2016 Oakland Athletics Fantasy Camp. It's held from January the 15th to the 21st at the A's new spring training facility in Mesa, Arizona. Get out of the stands and onto the field. Create lasting memories with former A's greats. For more details, go to HendersonBaseball.com or call 509-993-7338. I can see JR in a fantasy camp. John Reynolds, boy. <laughs> That would be a good one, wouldn't it? Richards facing Reddick, Valencia, and Vote, top of the sixth. Hayes hanging on to a three to two lead. Reddick got the A's first hit. It was a one out single in the fourth inning. And it started the three run rally. So Mahika starts to throw. His bullpen is the lower of the two tiered bullpens. Out in left field. Didn't used to be that way though. No, it did not. Scott Emerson, who is a bullpen coach, uh, mentioned that. He said, yeah, I can't see down where we are now. And it's probably why they changed it to have the Angels go up on the top yeah. tier. And he told me the same thing. I said, what do you mean you can't <laughs> see? He said, well, he said the problem is is when you're sitting on the benches out there your eye level <laughs> right in the way is the is the top of the of the yeah. outfield fence which is a big strip of green padding that's it right you there. can't see yeah and, and you can't lie down because then you'll think you're trying to take a nap but no. that's the best way to actually see three two pitch and Reddick chased it and strike out number five for Garrett Richards well, that movement. Yeah, down and away, and Perez won the target, got it down, and that was a great fastball, perfectly thrown outside corner, down, tempting to swing at. Don't want to take a chance to have it called the ball, so ready to strike out victim. Valencia struck out and then reached out an air and scored. So right now, at least, Ray, that air is a big play. Right. It was 
a ground ball that Giovatelli could not pick up clean. And all three of those runs in the fourth inning are unearned runs because of that error. Should have been the second out of the inning, but it allowed Valencia to reach. Richards closing in on 100 pitches. This will be number 94. It's reached four and poked foul. Headed for the upper deck. Another one two pitch here it is. And it's that hard breaking ball from Richards. Got a big walk and Sonore fielder's choice before Eric Sogard with a bases clearing double. That's the difference in the game for the A's, leading by one run. And a game of relievers for the Athletics. And it probably won't be long before the Angels okay. go to their bullpen. 96 pitches for Richards. Five and a third innings pitched so far. If you ask him, he might say to Mike Butcher, no, I'm good. <laughs> because his next start, if they need it, would probably be the uh, the play-in game on Tuesday. So he would already have an extra day of rest before that start. There's Mike Butcher. Done a very good job with the staff of the Angels considering some of the injuries. And Valencia strikes out for the second time. Another sweeping breaking ball, and that's been a pitch that right handers not been able to deal with and handle with any success. Tropiano did the same thing last night with the yep. same type of breaking pitch. This is not a bad hitting time right now because shadows completely in the fields and in the shade, so lights take a little bit of effect, although twilight, but. Lights do a, a very good job here for the hitters, especially this time of night. Pretty good backdrop here, I've been told. Yep, yeah, exactly. As long as you can avoid looking at the rock pile. Yeah, don't, so, look, yeah. don't glance to your left. Because if you glance to your left, your initial thought would be, what is that? <laughs> and it's not real. It's just. It's a rock pile. It's a rock pile, but the hitter's eye straight ahead. It, that green mass in center, that's more of the hitter's eye. But if you're a left hand hitter, you could look over the shoulder of the right hand and say, That is strange, I think. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the Artie Moreno, the current owner of the Angels. It's not had a world championship. The Disney Company Corporation owned it in 2001, the only time the Angels won. And they are the ones that put the rock pile in left center. Is there a ride that goes down through that water? No, splash down. It's supposed to resemble a yeah. splash mountain. But you just may have hit on something. Strike three and two. So three one breaking ball from Garrett Richards. Stephen count to Stephen Boat. I think he thought the ball came around the plate. He was uh, a couple of words with the home plate umpire. Actually, the ball might have backed up a little bit. But that one not close. Speaking of the rock pile in center field, this at one time was completely enclosed with the Rams were playing here. So the Angels and the Rams played here. And of course, the Rams moved on to St. Louis. But you can imagine that straight center field area that was bleacher, the upper deck was all the way around in the outfield. It was Huge. ugly. <laughs> it was, and it was so hot. There was never any breeze blowing down on the field. But when the Disney Corporation purchased the Rams and left, they just imploded everything in center field and changed it. And it's pretty it's nice. Yeah, pretty nice. Actually, it's with stood all the years that it's been here. At least uh, from what we're looking at here. But underneath, it seems to be a little bit scary. Warren starts to throw. And they enclosed it. And the 
enclosure was finished in 1981 when the Rams moved out this way. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. And the Rams left in 1995, and then they tore it back yeah. down. You can almost envision what it would look like at the Coliseum without Mount Davis, that's because right. that's what it looked like here. I mean, you weren't able to see anything. I mean, you can see the freeway and the pond, all the things beyond the outfield here. Done a nice job with it. And you see those highlights <laughs> from the 80s. That's and right. And Angels had some good teams, but you see those highlights of home runs going into the seats, especially in left field, and it, it really did not look yeah. very good. You're right. And it is a nice ballpark. Yeah. But enclosed all the way around. Two pitch struck him out with a 96 mile an hour fastball. So a walk and three strikeouts in the top of the sixth inning for Garrett Richards. So bottom of the six coming up. A's three, Angels two. Start from Barry Zito, four solid innings from the A's left-hander. Good breaking ball. He had a curveball working. Good change up. This one back at him. Transfer he dropped it. That was a 1-3 double play. And that is a moot point thrown to second. This is one blemish that he gave up a solo home run to Mike Trout. But the two runs he gave up, both solo home runs, which is good. Even though he walked four, but got uh, some big double plays. But Eric Sogar with a big hit so far for the Athletics. All three runs unearned, but they still count. He is leading three to nothing thanks to the hanging breaking ball from Garrett Anderson to Eric Sogard. And Sogi drives in big three. Gives the A's a three to two lead. Barry Zito went just four innings, would not qualify. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK. ATT mobilizing your world. So the new pitcher for the A's is Edward Mejica. So Mejica here in the sixth inning. His first pitch to free freezes a strike when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. It's your oil change, tune up, and repair expert. So the right hander Mejica will face Freeze, Victorino, and Perez. Freeze is hit into a double play and he is homered. This one lifted into the air. Playable Reddick hustling in, still coming in, and Reddick reaches out and makes the catch for the first half. Pat, there's a case where Freeze swung the bat, did not know where the ball was. He stood at home plate and then realized it's down the right field line and started running. Almost dropped it in, but good play, good long run by Josh Reddick, who was playing Freeze deep because he does have opposite field power. But Reddick, excellent outfielder, able to get the ball, reached down, and Keep it from going to extra bases. And Diddy up again. As Victorino steps up. Good first pitch by Mejica, first strike. 
the Cardinals are beating the Pirates seven to nothing in the seventh inning in Pittsburgh. That is yep. also game two of a doubleheader. Pittsburgh won the first game eight to two. That's all the Cardinals have to do is win one of those two games, and they clinch the National League Central and they clinch home field advantage. Mm -hmm. So they did not win game one, but they got a nice lead in game two. So Cardinals are on their way to a division title. Again, also on their way to their 100th win. Jose Alvarez, the lefty, gets up now for the Angels. Backhanded nicely by Valencia. Throws in time, and that's out number two. Also saw in that game where Adam Wainwright was yes, pitching. Yes, that's right. And that's big. Early pitch out of the bullpen, but that's yeah. not a bad guy out of the bullpen. Absolutely. Ball. His was an Achilles. That's right. Tear, so not affecting his arm. So once he got that healed, but you think of Ryan Howard last at bat a few years ago in postseason when he came out of the batter's box and snapped his Achilles. So kept looking at this game. If uh, he could get through this inning, and best case scenario for the A's, we might see. Vendetti for the seventh, Dole for the eighth, and Doolittle for the ninth. Let's see if that's kind of a plan. Sam Fold came racing in, and it goes by him. And Perez is going to hit the bag at second, and he's going to head for third. The throw hits the cutoff, man, and Perez will stop at third. Oh, that's called in between. Base hit, E8, but Sam is going to hold up and concede the single. And it hit the grass, took off, and Perez, Sam knew it was going to be a triple, and he really are at least the three bases. It is a two base air single, but as the ball is in the center of her, watch it take off as he charged and tried to hold up, and when it skipped past him, right there, he could not get his glove down quickly enough, couldn't get his body in front of it, and forced the thing there, two outs. In this you, you know what becomes the most important thing there is his throw back into That's the right. cutoff. Hand. That's right. Because if it trickles away or short hops, mm -hmm. they're going to send the runner. That's right. Giovatella steps in and he swings at a high breaking ball. So again, a hit and an E8. So each team with two errors in the game. And he's now 122 errors on the year. Giovatella has grounded out and lined into a double play. High and deep to left field. Back, Smolinski, and it is gone. Giovatella pumps his fist, rounding second base, and the Angels have taken the lead. On a hanging breaking ball. Hit me all over it. He did. A hanging curveball, Giovatella. He swung at a pitch out of the strike zone. So the single to Perez and going to third, root point, especially with this happening. That's well over both bullpens. And a big two run blow with two outs. That one bounced in the right field, and that's a base hit. So Ibar has the third hit of the inning. So three home runs hit by the Angels in this game. Counted for all four of their runs. Bob Melvin's coming out. So we're going to have a pitching change, and the Angels have taken the lead here in the bottom of the sixth.
flood eggs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Now the Angels have taken the lead. A two-out, two-run homer by Johnny Giovatella. And now it's 4-3 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now the Angels have won seven in a row and ten out of twelve. And they have come back to take the lead. So Pat Venditti comes in. And he'll pitch a left handed to the left handed hitting Cole Calhoun. Okay. So I think you got the first two guys in this yeah. inning, but then single homer single. Back on April the 21st, Johnny and Givatel. Remember that game at Pomeranz pitched? Three run home run down the left field line. Yep. So he's hit four home runs this year. He's hit two against the A's. We're told he's driven in 13 runs against the A's. He's got four RBIs yeah. in this series. Yeah. So he's had huge hits all season long. And that was a 3 2 fastball that he hit in the second inning. That was back in April, and that gave them the lead. And this definitely gave him the lead today. And the Angels 11 and 7 against the A's so far this year. Rolled foul. And this was a 3 2 fastball, but the previous pitch was a curveball that missed. And that pitch to Kimatella was a fastball that really wasn't. I mean, it was probably a pitch out of the strike zone, but he knew he was going to throw it. He missed for the 2 2 curveball, came back with a fastball, and I mean, even the smallest of guys hit, don't hit a lot of home runs, able to load up, look sure. for it, and hit it. And he did it. And he swings hard. He yes, takes he a big rip at it. And that one is drilled right center. That's trouble. And that is off the wall. Bounces right to Reddick. They wheel it back in. We're going to have a play at the plate. Here comes the throw. It's late. Ibar scores five to three. RBI double for Calhoun. On well, a hanging breaking ball, and Calhoun came close to a two run home run. So Mike Trout is not going to see Vendetti. It looks like. Got to go to the bullpen. Ball came back with the fact two outs. And Ivar able to go on contact and made it easily. So Dole coming in. And Diddy faces one hitter. Gives up the double. So Dole in. It's 5-3 Angels. The home opener against the Ducks. The home of the authentic Sharks fan is CSN Telephone. So Sharks coming up. Warriors soon after that. So Ryan Dull comes in. 
Last night, the A's saw the Angels score seven runs with two outs. In this inning, all three, two outs. First two outs, easy. Fly ball to right field, fly ball, ground, or ground ball, third base. And single home run, single double. Four consecutive hits trying to get the final out. That's why Rondo's been brought in to face the power hitting Mike Trout. So sixth A's pitcher of the night, and we're in the sixth inning. MVP chance around the stadium, and it is another MVP type season for Trout. He usually has competition in Miguel Cabrera, but Cabrera, not that Cabrera's not having a good year, but he's missed quite a bit of time this year. There's a guy in Toronto yeah. that's going to uh, we know that guy. garner a lot of votes. And again, they're all in by Sunday. This is Wednesday, Sunday before the playoffs begin. One and one the count to Trout. Walk, Homer single. Lays off a hard slider. Did not go over. Calhoun, the runner at second, he has the RBI double. Another slider, that one catches the outside corner, two and two. That's a big run that he just drove in, Calhoun, with the ball off the wall. A one run deficit, but then he just added another one, Jim Patel, of course, with a two run home run, giving the lead. And it's high, so full count. Interesting to see if Dole throws the 3 2 slider. Throw it hard. Throw it hard. Yeah. And he did. It's tapped slowly. Simeon to first. Not in time. Here comes Calhoun. The throw to the plate. He's out. He's out by a whole bunch. Calhoun just kept running and he ends up being retired at the plate but three runs for the Angels and they lead 5-3. Strongest fan photo to CSNCA Data Strong Fan. You just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by T Mobile. Tonight's fan photo is from Luis Elvira Jr. And it's Richie Brown from San Pablo with Stomper at the game. So Richie and Stomper. Looking good. We are at Angel Stadium of Anaheim, and it's the final game of this series. And the Angels have stormed back to take a five to three lead. They go to their bullpen. Mike Bourne will take over for Garrett Richards, who goes six innings. 
How about the one for one and save opportunities and that's when both Smith and Street went down. Mike Warren was put in to close out a game which was successful. Taylor Taylor at Featherston that goes in at second base for Johnny baseball. Get him out of there. Yeah. So Warren. To face Sogard. First pitch up and away. Richards goes six innings. Really only gave up the one costly hit. He only gave up two hits. Good walk for him. So one and one to Sogard. Bases clearing double in the fourth. Simeon and Smolinski will follow. Corner infielders in. Warren misses high. Two and one. The Rangers have scored four times in the bottom of the third inning. And they now lead the Tigers six to two. Warren's got good change up. Very good change. Face the, the A's. Face the A's a lot in the early part of the season, but not in the latter part, but back now in a per, uh, prominent role for Mike Sosha with a couple of big relievers out. That one rolled towards second. Featherston. And for defense. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another air. Three airs by the Angels tonight, two by the Athletics. Uh, Jim Otella made one that turned out to be big before Sogar drove in three thanks to the air. This one charged by Featherston and you know, goes around the play and misses it a couple times. So Sogard's aboard. Here's Simeon. So I mean, I don't, I'm a little surprised Gio Vitello yeah. out of the game, but Featherston obviously, unless there's something wrong with Gio Vitello, Featherston must be considered a better defensive player. Oh wow! <laughs> He so, gave him time. Well, I, I didn't see time I didn't. actually. I call. didn't either. Let's let's see. Yeah, Simmons going to ask, but Chris Guccione. I mean, I thought when he stepped out, I thought he's going to call a strike. Should have, because he never called. He time never out. did. It, it, he he asked for it, but it doesn't mean. But whenever the umpire doesn't put his hands up and the pitcher being makes the throw, yeah, you, you can ask for it, yeah. but it, it has to be requested. And and you it know, has it, to be granted. Right, me. and he can't verbally because the pitcher is not going to hear it. Popped up, and it'll be into the first few seats behind home plate. The umpire immediately puts up his hands yeah. and gets out of the way in case the pitcher does throw the ball. But that was a little strange. I have seen umpires not granted the hitter step out and call a strike yeah. if it's if it's in the strike zone. That happened to be a breaking ball that was there. Unless he, I mean, I guess he could have verbally said something. But you want the pitcher to know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The pitcher has to know, otherwise, you, you don't want him to throw unnecessarily or get him to stop. But. It's just kind of strange that nothing was done until after the pitch had been made. One and two to Simeon, who has hit a fly ball to center field. And he has struck out. Setting up inside. And it's bold foul. So the three runs allowed by Richards are all unearned. And the swing and a miss by Simeon. Late swing, almost a almost a late protecting swing. And the ball just kept moving away from it. So 
Well, let's see, he's going to be a call back. Coco -co Crisp is going to hit. So it indeed will be Coco. Smolinski had a strikeout and then reached on an air in his two at bats. There are batting cages. The A's have a batting cage behind the dugout. So in advance of coming out on the field of the Coco taking quite a bit of time. He must have been on the bench and not taking swings, but you can go down into the batting cage and hit off the tee or a soft toss with Marcus Jensen, who is the assistant hitting coach. So we'll have a meeting on the mound with Mike Butcher. Indians now leading the Twins seven to nothing in the fourth inning in game two of that doubleheader. So Coco steps in with a runner at first. And one out. Sam Fold is the on deck hitter. That change up, and Mike Morin is a big guy, but he does not really throw very hard, and yeah. he really relies on his change up and his slider. Freeze even with the bag at third. Outfield is shallow in center and very shallow in left. And that's the changeup. And he can throw it as many times as he, he wants. He'll just keep throwing. Yeah, you got to get the same swing. It's like a palm ball coming out of his hand. Coco steps back in one and one the count. And the A's have struck out eight times tonight. They struck out 14 times last night and they have struck out 30 times in this series and they're a team that does not strike out a lot. And that was another changeup. And that was and he would may throw it yeah, again. Yeah and he should really I mean with that kind of swing. I'm a strong believer that hitters do not believe that a pitcher is going to throw multiple changeups. Two is Exceptional three is out of out of the question, but why not? I think he just shook to it because saw Perez go down with it. Four fingers didn't wiggle them, but that's usually a change up sign. Yeah, that's a pitcher hand. It's my best pitch. Let's throw it. And that one in the dirt. Guccione keeps, keeps looking into the Angels' dugout. I don't know if they're talking to him a little bit. Maybe saying, uh, how about getting Coco Chris in the batter's box and swing? Yeah. They're not the only ones saying that. <laughs> so full count with Sogar, the runner, at second. If Sogar takes off, he's got a good lead, and they'll check on him. Well, if he does, Coco has to make contact because we have seen Perez throw very well. To fold out a couple of innings ago, and the changeup that or likes to throw and continues to throw might be one that be tough to make contact. Coco is thinking about exactly what he's going to throw. 
Sogard runs, and the ball's lined toward Trout in center. It's a base hit. Sogard with a big turn. Now he's got to hustle back. So the A's have two on and one out. On a hit and run, even though the ball was hit hard, I think that's a time that you could really go to second or go to third. Because you'd figure Trout would want to keep the double play in order and may not take a chance throwing the third unless he's assured of hitting the cutoff man. But I mean, it would have been a tough, tough thing to try, and maybe that's why Sogard just shut it down. So Coco now six for 13 as a pinch hitter. And speaking of pinch hitting, we're going to get another one, and it's going to be Billy Butler. Trevor Gott will get up and start to throw. So the A's have the tying runs on base with one out, and Butler will hit for full. First pitch is off the plate. An air started the inning. And now it's 2 0. Oh, Mike Morn trying to make things interesting here in the seventh inning. Canna will be next. Instead of trying to throw the change up towards the middle of the plate and then let the softness of the pitch take effect, he's now trying to throw it to the corner. It's overthrown a little bit. Missed again, 3 0. He does not like to throw that fastball. Nope. <laughs> he hasn't thrown one yet. Nope. And he missed way inside, and on four pitches, he walks Butler. So that'll bring up Canna. So Butler to first. He will be run for by Gentry. So Gentry, the pinch runner. So Sogard, Crisp, and Gentry. Lots of speed on the bases for the A's. And here comes Mike Sosha. The wheels are turning. Slowly. <laughs> so we're going to the bullpen when it's time for change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up. Your oil change, tune-up, and repair experts.
is brought to you by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Beautiful look at Huntington Beach on a Wednesday night in Southern California. The Angels leading the A's 5 to 3, but the A's have the bases loaded and one out. So a great scoring opportunity for the Athletics, and they will face Trevor Gott. 46th appearance. He's got a very good ERA at 2.98. And sometimes a game can be saved in innings that are not the ninth inning. And that would be the case right here. Uh, God has pitched well. He pitched a couple of nights. Actually, last night he pitched the game and he's got a good line fastball. Actually, I'm going to take that back. He pitched on Monday, the 28th. This is the 30th. Got a good fastball and Mark Canna going to try to do what Eric Sogard did back in the fourth inning, try to clear the bases. And you're right about. A save situation Mike Bourne saved the game just recently pitching the ninth inning but a tough seventh inning for him with a walk on a 3 2 pitch and then our base it on 3 2 pitch then a walk on four pitches to Billy Butler a couple of pinch hitters. So the first pitch to Canna from God here it is and it runs inside ball one. The base runner Sogard reached on an air. Uncle Crisp had a single. Butler had the walk. Gentry is the pinch runner. A little flare. It could fall and it will fall. Sogard trots home. Everybody moves up 90 feet and it's 5 to 4. So Canna gets RBI number 69. Oh, the times you would like to see two outs at an inning, just one out, so that all the runners had to hold because they did not know if the speed of Mike Trout would get to it. Could not. The runner at first had a pretty good idea of what was happening. That was Gentry had a pretty good angle. The ball is going to drop in front. Sogard had to wait, as did the runner at second. So now Reddick steps up. And Reddick checks his swing, pitches called a strike. Reddick is one for three. Fly ball to the left, a single and a strikeout. Big hole in right center field. Swing and a miss, keeping the ball away from Reddick. Well, talk about a herky jerky delivery and throws hard with a lot of movement, especially from a left hander. Inside of the right hander, Canna, that he looped in the center field, but really running away hard and strong from lefty Reddick. That number 62 makes you think of was it Steve Shields? That's right. Scott Shields. Scott, and he didn't yeah. throw as hard Scott as Scott Shields. Got them. Yeah. Reliever. It's not Scott Gott. Scott <laughs> Gott. <laughs> to right. 2-2 two, two pitch. Way inside. 96 miles an hour. And now it's a full count. Valencia will be next. So tense moments in the Angels dugout. Yeah. Seeing their lead slip away here a little bit. Five to four. Chris was lucky to catch that one. He was set up outside as he'll probably do it again. And got overthrew it. And he misses outside. Walks in a run. And this game is tied at five. As Coco trots in to score. Hey. 
make pitches. All he has to do is throw it in the middle of the plate, and he just could not do it. So nice at bat by Josh Reddick. He'll get the run batted in, and Danny Valencia, who is 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts. His ground ball that was an error on Givatella. Sorry, this is one of those times where no matter who you are as a hitter, you can't think about a grand slam. Nope. You got to think about put the ball in play. You got to think that the pitcher's in trouble. Yep. He just gave up a hit and he just walked a batter, a lefty, by making pitches that really not even close, the ones out of the strike zone. And Reddick might have swung at the second strike, which was out of the strike zone. But right now, just really think opposite field and a line drive. First pitch to Valencia right on the outside corner for strike. So good pitch there by Trevor Gott. Two runs in. A's have tied it. That one tapped foul. It was a breaking ball, not where Gott wanted it. And Valencia now in the hole 0 2. Ball at 97 miles an hour, but way off the plate. Well, God has good enough pitches. He could be a closer, but he has to be able to find a strike zone. The movement on his fastball is exceptional. Slider is good. And for Perez, the catcher, you set up a middle of the plate and let whatever movement go sideways, but not try to go to the corner. Valencia, pop up, shallow right. Calhoun, he's got it. Tagging up. Gentry, he's going to stop and go back, and that would have been a, well, that was the right thing to do. Great throw by Calhoun, one hop right to the plate. So Gentry bluffed and goes back to third. Well, you work on it, and you can make throws like that. And it's a lost art, and that is outfield play, outfield throws. But Calhoun works at the art of catching the ball properly and making the throw. And he does a one hop to Perez right on the plate and he would have been out even with the speed of Gentry been out by 20 feet. So now it's up to vote. So he has 11 but how many do you think he's taken away because of his reputation one right there. First pitch to vote. And he is a fastball first time. Vote has struck out walked and scored and then walked again. A couple of grand slams in his career. Pop up foul, high fastball, and it's 0 and 2. So the crowd making some noise. It's been kind of a quiet crowd tonight. Coming to life here in the top of the seventh inning. Oh, two pitches, a fastball. Colorway's outside, one and two. Right center Calhoun's not going to get it one run scores two runs score Reddick stops at third and Steven vote with a two out two run single and the A's lead seven to five. Another off speed pitch that missed and Steven vote coming through big time and a four run inning He's down by two now lead by two and got well you talk about just serving one up. Did not throw it hard. Captain almost looked like he wanted to kind of guide the ball in the strike. He had a one and two count and really did not throw it with a lot of conviction. And Stephen Vogt found the hole and two runs scored easily. And Stephen Vogt giving 70 runs batted in with 18 home runs and 
One of the biggest ones right there. And now Laurie steps up. And Laurie takes the strike. Laurie has walked, reached on a fielder's choice, and struck out. And loops from foul. Laurie's going to get a new bat. Well, Jose Alvarez, he was up earlier. So three hits in the inning, two walks, an air. And the A's have scored four times. Swings the bat, one by Eric Sogard, one by Steven Vogt, both on breaking pitches, both with two strikes, and resulted in five runs. That's right, all the more reason you throw the breaking pitch hard with two strikes, you've got a chance to get them out, but not those two. So a 97 mile an hour fastball strikes out Lori, but the A's bat around, score four times, and now have a 7 to 5 lead as we have reached the seventh inning stretch. For games at Hohokam Park have been announced. Enjoy a first class experience. Get an early glimpse of next year's squad at the A's all new spring training venue in Mesa, Arizona. For more information, visit athletics.com slash spring today. So that will be here before you know it. We've got I don't know. It's a good ball game. It's not a real pretty ball game. Uh -huh. Five pairs made and Seems like all of them have been costly. Yeah. But the A's have a 7 to 5 lead. Bottom of the seventh inning. Coco Crisp stays in the game in left. And Gentry is now in center. And Dull. Back out there now. And he's pitching with a lead. So he'll face. Pujols, Crone, and Freeze, bottom of the seventh. Valencia has it. A couple steps to his left, throws across, and Pujols is retired. So a hitless night so far for Elbert Pujols. For three with a walk. And that'll bring up C.J. Crone. No, it's Corone. C.J. Caron. And for Rees. Yeah, I got to say it a little. <laughs> oh, that's a P.A. Now, so everybody's got a F.A.R.E.E.Z. Here's the thought. <laughs> Just say it normal. Thank you. <laughs> Simeon across the diamond, and Caron is out. <laughs> this was September 1st, and this was the Major League debut of Ryan Dole, and he's done a nice job for the A's. 
Jake Dominic authenticating it as everything. Strikeout. So he's put himself in the plans for 2016. He struggled a little bit lately. But really, Ray, there are numerous question marks surrounding the bullpen yeah. next year. He's looking for good young arms, and Dole certainly fits that category. About 10 pitches for the right hander, and thought maybe he would be the setup man for Sean Doolittle. He may get to go out at the eighth anyway. And he probably was planning to pitch the eighth, but now this is the seventh. Had to come in last inning to get a big out. And trying to get three up and three down in this inning, and maybe a decision to be made whether he pitches the eighth. Play this game's going back and forth. Just never know. Dole gets ahead of David Freeze, one and two. Freeze homer. He was in the fourth inning, a solo shot. Rangers still leading the Tigers six to two in the fifth inning in Arlington. Twins won game one, losing game two, seven nothing in the sixth. Cardinals are three outs away from a win and a National League Central Division title. Yankees were down. They've tied it now. Yankees back have the come Red back. Sox. Five five in the eighth at Yankee Stadium. Breaking ball in there. Strike three called. So three up, three down inning for Ryan Dull. Eighth inning coming up from the Big A in Anaheim. It's the A seven and the Angels five. Thirty. It's over on our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, and it's brought to you by Hyundai. We'll have all the highlights from this Wild A's Angels game, and the Raiders getting set for the Bears, and the 49ers getting set for the Green Bay Packers in San Francisco on Sunday. So 10:30, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Check out Sportsnet Central. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. It's the left-hander, Jose Alvarez, coming in. And the ace leading this game now 7-5, to five, thanks to a four-spot in the seventh. So with every game now, obviously, final week, every game for the Angels. I mean, a loss is... Devastating. It is. Yeah. I mean, you got four games left after this. You have a half game lead in the wild card. Well, and especially you look at the division. If the Rangers hang on a win, which they're winning by four runs, and the Angels lose, that's a full game. They go in down three 
yeah. to play the Rangers starting tomorrow night for four games. That's right. And if they're able to at least win, and who knows what's going to happen, but it could be most two, and you go in with the hope of at least playing. They're going to play competitive baseball anyway, but uh, you're right about the, the wild card. Houston, they're underway or getting ready to. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know, just the simple math is if, if you're down two, well, then you can take three out of four and you're right. tied. But if you're down three, you have to sweep. Exactly. Exactly right. High in the air toward Trout. And Trout grabs it. So Sogard is out. And the A's do know that after today's game, they have no control over anything. No. Because they're playing Seattle and to uh, the bottom teams in the American League Western Division out of it both. So it'll be up to Houston going to Arizona. No TH. And of course the Angels and the Rangers playing. And you know Chip is going to play hard. You see his team and let's look at the lineup even for today in their out. But he's got his everyday lineup in sure in Colorado. Astros and the Mariners will get started in about 10 minutes. Some of the Astros I'm sure. Keeping a close eye on the scoreboard and this game. If the Angels were to lose and the Astros were to win, the Astros would go back into that second wild card spot. Drilled left center. Trout on the move and he can't get it and goes past him. Simeon's going to round the bag at second and he's going to go to third and he's going to make it standing up. I think Trout lost it. It's hard to believe, but the way he went after it, tried to backhand it, got under his glove. Marcus Simeon's speed, seven triple. He was motoring around bases, but the pitch was a good one to hit. He did hit it, hooking a little bit away from Mike Trout. As he goes after it, figure you can't catch it. He just tried to short hop it and got past him. His momentum carrying towards left field, and all the while, Simeon motoring. Oh, the, he just, <laughs> I think he just missed it. Yeah. He's made so many miraculous catches, and I think everybody expected him to make that one. He just could not bend down far enough to get it. So here's Coco. What a block by Perez. That one bounced well in front of the dirt of home plate. I bet you're right, right? Yeah. There you are. Lost in the lights. Wow. And you lose in the lights, it's all about the trajectory of the baseball. Exactly. It just yeah. is not high enough to go above the lights. And you think about just looking at the bank of lights as we sit here. It, it, oh, it's sure. blinding. I mean, you, you you can't find a baseball. When it comes out, it's already past you. 2-0 to Coco Crisp, who had a big hit in that seventh inning. He pinch hit with a runner at first and one out, and he got a base hit. He stays in the game. Huge foul. Pretty pretty good 2 0 changeup yeah. by Alvarez. 80 miles an hour, and Coco hit it right off the end of the bat. <laughs> Gentry is the on deck hitter. A huge insurance run standing out there here in the eighth inning. Simeon has to dive back, so the count two and two. Good hard slider from Alvarez after a changeup away on the 2 0, so he's gone soft with a changeup and a slider. Back to back pitches. The glove of Crone into right field, a hit maybe, but a definite run for the A's. I shouldn't say it. That's an error all the way. 
Simeon comes in and it's eight to five. It might not even be an RBI, but who cares? The fact that the A's scored the run, that's the biggest thing. And that's the importance of getting a third base on the triple because the infield playing in, the short, quick hop just right through the wickets. So things falling apart for the Angels defensively. So we got another pitching change. The A's have added a run. They now lead eight to five. Salas coming in. Market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widgets, and more. Visit MLB.tv today. So the new pitcher is Fernando Salas. And he comes in with the ace leading eight to five. And we've added a run here in the eighth. Salas, five and two with a 4.33 ERA. He is pitcher number five in the game for the Angels. A's have used six pitchers and aren't finished. Oh, no. <laughs> and neither are the Angels, probably. He started, started yeah. yes, he did, four innings for Barry Zito. His catcher, Stephen Vogt, next to him. A big two run, two out single. So here is Burns, who's hitting for Gentry. Angels defense has hurt them here in this eighth inning. Well, evidently, in the last inning when the A scored four, only one was earned. So if that's the case, then six of the seven runs, first six, seven of the seven, unearned. Four errors, most in the game this year. I thought they talked so badly about the A's. Yeah. If you're the Angels, this is not the time you want to play sloppy uh, baseball. No. And no. they no. have been sloppy. Trout missed the ball in the lights. Not a whole lot you can do about that. Is too, and it's hard to criticize Mike Trout, but if you don't see it real well, play it into a single. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, that's easy to say. Well, and, and when he went after it, he might have reached down just having the ball come out of yeah. the lights too. I mean, it, it's tough with the, with the lights. You've seen some of the great Hall of Famers, Gold Glovers, miss balls when it's in the light. Just nothing you can do. I mean, sun is one thing, and the game started with a tough sun field, but now the lights fully affecting the game and. Evidently caused Trout, a, I mean, uh, normally anything close to him that he can get to, he catches.
three and one to Burns. The leadoff spot for the A's tonight. Well, it started with Fold. Butler hit for Fold. Gentry ran for Butler. Burns is hitting for Gentry. So we've seen four different players in the leadoff spot. Salas knocks it down. He'll go to first and get the out there. And he's lucky he recovered. That's another error if he doesn't make it. Could have been possibly a double play, although Burns' speed would probably have prevented that. So two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position. And if you let it go, if you let that ball go off, Featherston is right there ready to catch it, tag the bag, and he might have turned two, but reaching out, really not knowing where his second baseman was, Salas reached for it, knocked it down. Now Ramos. Another lefty. Almost, yeah. Canna had a big hit in the seventh inning. Dropped a little bloop single into center field with the bases loaded. That got the A's their fourth run. None of the Angels relievers have been untouched tonight. Warren gave up three runs. Scott gave up one. Alvarez now has given up one. And it's 3 and 0. Oh. With Reddick waiting in the on deck circle and a lefty getting ready in the bullpen. I think you know what I'm saying, right? I'm saying I'm. <laughs> if he got him, use him. <laughs> Maybe all the excitement when Johnny Giovatella hit a two-run home run. That's right. It seems like it was two days ago. Yeah. And he walked him on four pitches. All right, Mike. Here we come. And there comes Mike Sosha. So that is seven walks tonight by Angels pitchers. So Salas faces two hitters. He's done, and Cesar Ramos is coming in. It's eight to five. A's have added a run here in the eight. to CSNCalifornia.com and check out our A's insider Joe Stiglitz who provides wire to wire reporting for this A's 2015 season. He's given us breaking news, video special features and much more all season long. It's only on CSNCalifornia.com. So Cesar Ramos, the left-hander, comes in. Disneyland in the oh, California wow. Adventure. What is that, a beautiful shot? Is that from the blimp? Or what is it? They take it's a stop this day? Yeah, it's the Comcast Sports in California blimp. I think so. 
That's pretty special. Larry can do it all, man. So we're almost to face Reddick. Two on, two out here in the eighth, and a run in. First pitch to Reddick he is off the plate outside. Reddick is one for three with a bases loaded walk. So he picked up his 77th RBI. Pops this one up. Third base side. Freeze makes the catch in foul territory. Side retired. So another run for the A's. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's the A's eight and the Angels five. For the A's, 5, 10, and 4 for the Angels. Barry Zito started tonight, went four innings, gave up a couple of earned runs. Big hit in the game was Eric Sogard's three run double. Garrett Richards, no earned runs in six innings. The bullpen kind of collapsed for the Angels tonight. And the A's have a chance to sneak out of Anaheim with a win. And it would be a damaging loss to the Angels simply because they were leading in the game. So Dull stays in there. And Dull faced Mike Trout to end the sixth. Gave up a single, but Calhoun was thrown out at the plate for the third out. And then in the seventh inning, it was a three up, three down inning for Dull. So only 14 pitches thrown. So Burns is now in center field. Pinch hitter is Efren Navarro, left handed hitter. Navarro is hitting for Victorino. And there's a strike, and it's one and two. So Navarro, the pinch hitter here, leading off the eighth inning. And he's trying to get to Doolittle. to the backstop. The St. Louis Cardinals won the second game of that doubleheader and clinched their third consecutive National League Central Division title. So they also picked up their 100th win. So they will have home field advantage in the first two rounds of the postseason if they make it that far. Not in the World Series, of course. 
So another great year for the Cardinals. They just keep rolling along. Matt Holliday was out for an extended period yeah. of time. Matt Adams, big first baseman, gone. Wayne Wright missed the whole year. Their starting pitcher, huh. Yadier Molina. Who knows if he's yeah. going to come back? He's got a yeah. they thumb injury. Much. John Jay was out Jay. for a long time. I mean, you, you look at Brandon Moss was picked up. He's over there now, yeah. and uh, he's contributed to the Cardinals. They find a way. Probably doesn't hurt to have I see a red sellout pretty much every game. No, <laughs> so. but they they keep bringing up young players yeah, who are right. really talented, and that's that's a terrific organization. So congratulations to the Cardinals yeah. on their Central Division title. This one is popped up. The shift was on, so coming over is Valencia, but he's got plenty of time, and he makes the catch. Well, there's a case catch. Three and two. Navarro, they're down three runs. And he must have swung the ball for You know, and you get a little bit too anxious and think of maybe you're going to drive the ball instead of being a little bit of patient. Take the height of this pitch. Close. Maybe too close to take. But good fastball from Ryan Doe. Good job on his part coming back on a 3 2 pitch and got a big out. So with a one out, here's Carlos Perez. Good pitch right on the outside corner with a 92 mile an hour fastball. And that was just pitch number 22, and he came in to really get the Trout. out. Yeah. In the sixth inning, and, and you could look back at that, although in his one run game, that's when Calhoun was thrown out. Left field and deep. Coco's going to watch this one sail out of the ballpark. Eight to six. So Perez hits his fourth home run of the year. Hanging slider and he got out in front and pulled it. Not a very sharp breaking slider. Dull left it towards the middle of the plate. And thinking about when Calhoun was at second, Trout hit the infield hit. He tried to score from yeah. second and it's thrown out at the plate. You got Albert Pujols coming up, potentially first and third, and two outs, and he did not get a chance to hit. Featherston was at second. Now Bob Melvin's coming out, as David Murphy has been announced. But a lot of maneuvering here in September with about 100 players on both rosters. So not really. <laughs> not that much. <laughs> so Murphy <laughs> is going to hit. And we got a new pitcher, and it's going to be Sean Doolittle. Maybe extra work for Sean Doolittle tonight if he's going to get a save. We'll be back. With 2016 priority seating, choose your exact seating location for next season. All A's offer a variety of full and partial season plans that qualify for great benefits, including half-price parking 
That's all with special flexible ticket exchange program, which is one of the best, and much, much more. For more information, call 510 6 3 goes or you can visit athletics.com slash 2016. So Sean Doolittle comes in. So he comes in with a one out here in the eighth inning. Last time we saw Doolittle, Ray, he was working hard. Yes, he was. And that was Friday night against the Giants. 38 fastballs. 38 <laughs> pitches, 38 fastballs, and he got a save. And he had to work for it, but he got it. First pitch to Murphy. Lofted high and foul. RBI on the ball hit by Coco Crisp, which Simeon scored. The ball that went through the first baseman's legs. And Ray, you think that's the right call? Well, the determination was whether or not Simeon was going on contact. If he was, it's it's an RBI because you can't not assume you're going to get him out. Yeah. But I think our guys showed it, and then Ed Munson, his official score, had the the home team look at it, and they must have had a better angle and showed because he came down the line. But it was kind of moving and then took off once the ball went through. So I think that determination has already been made. So guard charges quickly to first, and they get Murphy for a number two. I started to say that on Monday night, David Murphy got the game winning hit against Fernando Plot. And it's amazing how few advances he's had against lefties this season. And stayed in this time with. Sean Dillon coming in, so I guess Mike Sosha did not want to use three players for one at bat. Featherston with Murphy pinch hitting for him, and he stayed up and grounded out. So good out, big out for the pitcher, Sean Dillon. Top of the order in Ibar, who's one for four. Six for 12 in his career against Sean Doolittle for Eric Ibar. In this series, he's four for 13. He's taken all the way and it's in the first round. Grounded right to Simeon, who has it. Throws in time, side retired. So the Carlos Perez home run tightens it up just a little bit. Ninth inning coming up, 8 6. A's lead the Angels. Friday night, 
The final road trip continues, and we'll be in Seattle to take on the Mariners. Aaron Brooks and Hisashi Iwakuma is the pitching matchup there. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with A's pregame live. The home of A's baseball is CSN, so Brooks and Iwakuma on Friday night from Safeco Field. Felix Hernandez will not pitch in that series. The Mariners announced earlier today that he is done for the season. I guess his elbow is a little bit sore. So we'll not see King Felix. Efren Navarro stays in the game. He's playing left field. And that one is hit high, deep, and well into the upper deck. Not a lot of fall balls go up there. Ryan Jackson is now the second baseman. So one and one to Danny Valencia, who is 0 for 4. He did reach on an air and score a run in the fourth inning. The attendance tonight 34,033. So the final home attendance this year 3,012,747. So for the 13th consecutive year, the Angels go over the 3 million mark in attendance. So that's quite a feat. Freeze. Straightens up and throws out Valencia. So Valencia 0 for 5. Now John Reynolds uh, cracked that up here. Said that the th about 30,000 season ticket holders. So since they count season tickets, then kind of assured yep. they were going to get over the 3 million. Tickets are sold. Yeah, tickets are sold. So. Money is in the bank. So John Reynolds knows all those good stats, good information. He's yeah. able to pass that yeah. along. So Vogt has a big hit in this game. The two out, two run single in the seventh that broke a 5 5 tie. Okay, since that run last inning was considered unearned, the A's have scored exactly one earned run tonight. Mm -hmm. All those errors have contributed to seven unearned runs. And we've experienced that all season. It seemed like every time the A's would make an error, an unearned run would score. It happened tonight to the Angels at an inopportune time from their standpoint. Stephen Vogt drives one toward right center field. Calhoun dives and he caught it. Wow. Sensational play by Cole Calhoun. Wow. Right on the warning track, laid out and took a double and maybe a triple away from Stephen Boat. What a play. And Kite being a left handed fielder, the glove on the right hand helps him, but you cannot take away the play in which he just laid out. Sam Fold in Houston and Cole Calhoun here. Robbing Stephen Vogt. Stephen couldn't believe it. Got to second base, turned around, saw the umpire with a fist up, and oh, Calhoun to the flip ball to Trout after a magnificent play. So we got a pitching change. Joe Smith coming in. We'll be back.
Eagles are glad to see this guy in the mound, huh? Joe Smith. Yes, they are. He's their setup man, and with Houston Street out, he may be their closer as well. Joe Smith, the actually in the hotel in Minneapolis. Yeah. He turned his ankle on the, walking down the stairs, and he turned it bad. So he's been out a little bit while. A bit of time, but. and it would be his landing foot, the left foot, and that's what he said is critical because you favor that could affect your arm. But he wears the pant legs down over his shoes. He's supposed to wear his high top shoes, which gives added support. But with the pants legs being where they are, you can't tell whether they're the normal cleats or the high tops. But I'm sure, he's got the ankle wrap plus the high tops, and as a result, getting as much support as possible. So Smith, first pitch strike to Lori. Bottom of the ninth is going to be fun. <laughs> Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols are the three scheduled hitters for the Angels. The Rangers still leading six to two. Bottom of the sixth inning. Astros and the Mariners are underway. No score in the second. Glory reaches for it. Stays alive. Twins are losing 10 to 1 in the eighth inning game two of their doubleheader. So it looks like the Twins are going to split that doubleheader, which they probably cannot afford to do. They needed a sweep today. Setting up outside, 0-2 pitch and a foul tip. Lori strikes out for the third time. So we are headed to the bottom of the ninth. Put your seatbelts on, folks. The big hitters are coming up to face Doolittle. 8-6, A's lead. Innings gave him four hits, two runs, and a couple of big double play balls early. 76 pitches for Rizzuto, and what could very well be his final major league start. 15 years in the big leagues and 165 career wins. And a heck of a career for Barry Zito. And it was a lot of fun to see him finish back with the athletic. <laughs> yeah. So 8-6 is the score. Doolittle is the pitcher, and it's Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. Well, if you want some drama, you got it here at the big A. These three guys against Doolittle. Calhoun, one for five. Trout, two for five with a homer. Pujols, two for five with a homer. Calhoun is one for three. He had an RBI double in the sixth. High pop up. Left field. Foul territory and just into the seats about five rows back. It's been Zito, Golom, Otero, Mahika, Diddy, Dole, and Doolittle. So 
for seven pitchers tonight. And seven pitchers for the Angels as well. Got a couple of outs last inning, a couple of ground ball outs, but as they always say, the sitting down and getting back out on the mound is the one thing. But he has pitched enough since coming back off the disabled list that I think he's accustomed to know this. And I'm sure he's told Bob Melvin he could get more than three outs, he can go more than just one inning. So now Doolittle's got to come in with a strike. Rises to its feet. They are looking for a ninth inning rally. 3 1 pitch is popped up foul again. Doolittle got right in on the hand, so a pretty good 3 1 pitch. And the best thing for Sean Doolittle and Stephen Book, target down the middle, tell the world he's going to throw a fastball and instead of walking him, he's going to stay out of the stretch anyway, but it means that time runs the plate. Perez with a big home run to make it a two run game. Three two pitches driven to center. Burns going back, still going back at the wall. Gone. Eight seven. So home run number 25 for Calhoun. And it was a fastball, but not really. Look where Bolt is and what he does. He has to reach back. And Stephen say that that pitch a little bit too much on the inner part of the plate. And left handers like that location. That's five home runs they've hit tonight. Four solos and a two run shot. So the challenge continues. First pitch to Trout. And Trout had a mighty cut and he fouls it to the screen. So Calhoun now 82 RBIs on the year. Fastball just a bit high, one and one. Pujols to follow after Pujols, CJ Crone. And started lefty, right, right, now righty, righty, righty for the three outs. High strike call. Trout doesn't like it. One and two. The cap is Stephen Oak talked to us in Oakland whenever he had Doolittle throw 38 fastballs. You'd have to think, else we throw anything else. And that's a good location inside with a pretty good fastball, good velocity to try. Inside to even the count at two to 94 miles an hour. Missed to get inside. Full count. It was a full count pitch to Calhoun as well. Side and Trout's aboard with nobody out here in the night. And the concern about him is he's still the base threat, and Doolittle has not had a particularly great move to first base. Six walks issued by his pitchers tonight. And the good news is none of them have scored. Yep. Thankfully, four or five solo home runs, but what a very tough part of the batting order, especially with Calhoun hitting a home run and now Trout walking. Pujols asks for time and gets it. 
Pujols has hit into a double play, walked, hit a fly ball to center, and grounded out. That's what you're supposed to do when time is called. This is what Guccione did. Yeah. <laughs> Get out and, and like what he did with Simeon at the play. Pitch to Pujols inside, 1-0. To do little really have an almost pinpoint control. Yeah. Missing a little bit tonight. And now it's two and up. He's throwing hard, 93, 94 miles an hour, but and in the game last Friday when David Vogt was catching Doolittle. Doolittle said there were times when he thought, well, this would be a good time to throw a slider. But he said the most important thing was when Stephen Vogt came out to settle him down, throw up the fastballs, and he just did it there after walking Trout and the first two out of the strike zone of Pujols. So maybe that visit by Stephen Vogt would be enough to get him back on track. And let's hope when he throws a fastball that it's not one that can be hit by Pujols. Pujols had a good swing. He fouls it straight back into the upper deck, two and one. Just underneath our broadcast booth. So power on power here. Doolittle coming right at Pujols. And the gentleman with 558 home runs. Putting together the big swing. Now the count two and two. Outfield is very deep. Just shaded toward left center a little bit, but not much. And that one high fastball fouled right next door. And that foul ball was coming in hot. Well, the, the scary thing is Damn. every time Kuhos fouls one straight back, he's getting a beat on it just a little bit more. Ball is hit high and foul back behind the Angels dugout. One thing notice in this at bat by Pujols, Trout's not running. He does not want to think about running and figuring Pujols has the power and he's not been running as much anyway. But if he can get Pujols, you see what he do with the hitters to follow. Like to think if, if he threw him a slider, he'd screw him in the ground. Know, but, no, but, you, but you also, there's always that that temptation to do it, but the feeling of oh no, what if you hang it? <laughs> and you know, Pujols doesn't try it. I mean, those are swings of a fastball. He's not loading up and lifting the front leg. It's just all upper body, and that's the scary thing about a slider. And this fastball. Let it drop. Should retire Pujols, oh. and it does. See, let, can't let that drop. That ball was on soft grass. Let it drop. Forced Trout at second. He got Pujols at first. And Trout, and Trout was just standing at first base. You, you don't see it happen, but if there's ever a time to get speed off the bases, that was it. Now that's but, a significant difference yeah. in speed there. But at least to the got, point where you you probably have to. Yeah, you'd probably have to pinch run for Pujols. Well, yeah, right? you, yeah, know you I mean? might. But but when it's on the grass, there's no chance that it, it's going to take a bad yeah. hop on the dirt like it would on the dirt. Throne drives on the right field. Reddick's back, still going back, and Reddick at the warning track makes the catch. A well struck ball by Crone, but Reddick was playing deep, so he had time to get back there and make the catch. And that helped that he was playing yeah. two or three steps deeper. Yeah, that, that's the no doubles defense and. Reddick did it exactly what you're, the way you're supposed to play deep, and Trot has to retrace his steps back to first base. 
So two outs and here's freeze. Freeze one for four tonight. I said freeze is more of a singles hitter. Yeah. As opposed to the two that just popped up one popped up one line drive prop may think about running. And freeze hits it hard in the left center field of ace hit. Trout's going to dig for third. He's going to make it. And the Angels are still alive first and third two outs. Simeon came so close to catching this and forcing Trout at second. A dive to his left. Andres Glove, and then of course Trout able to get easily to third base. Not a Calgill's going to pinch hit. Calgill it is. So Daniel Robertson will pinch run for freeze at first. Would be the winning run, and Cal Gill is going to be the hitter. He's hitting for Navarro, for Navarro, a left handed hitter. Cal Gill, a right handed hitter. A former member of the Athletics, Colin Cal Gill, who likes fastballs. Cal Gill has just 68 at bats this year. And hitting 191. And Roberts a pretty good speed at first. You'd have to think that with Trout's speed at third, there would not be a throw through to second base, although that would be the potential winning run if he does steal. See if they try to send him to second or take the chance and just let Cowgill swing the bat. First pitch to Cowgill is bounced fair. Valencia fires to first in time. And the A's hang on and win it tonight here in Anaheim. Wow, what a ball game. Perry Zito started it. He went four, had to sit through five innings, and the A's hung on, and I mean hung on, to salvage the final game of this series. This is how it ended. And no chance for any base runners to do anything. Nice play by Valencia to his right, and a strong throw to get Calgill, and well, what a game for the Athletics to be able to win this one, considering all the unearned runs that the A's able to take advantage of the unearned runs, something that's bitten them all season. So do little saying, get it across the diamond, and yes, got it done. So the Angels and the Astros are now tied for that second wild card spot in the American League. What a ball game tonight. A's win it 8-7 over the Angels. You've been watching Ace Baseball on CSN California.